Good afternoon, disc golf fans. Round number one for the FPO division here at the 2024 Open at Austin, presented by Flight Factory Discs, is complete. And Cat Merch sits atop the leaderboard with a wonderful seven under par effort in the crazy wind conditions out here, playing a new layout at Harvey Pennock for the very first time. And it's tournament central time to recap that first round. Brian Earhart, Nate Perkins here yet again. Nate, you walked the grounds all day today with mm -hmm. the feature card. What do you make of that performance seven under par? Seven under is an incredible number, especially considering the wind that we didn't predict. We didn't know that it was going to get upwards of 20 mile per hour today. And out of the Northwest, it was a completely different direction than all these players practiced all week. So that's about as good of a number I thought we would see in calm conditions out here. And again, Brian, we're the tour is visiting another ball golf course. And when we hear ball golf course, we think, you know, predictable fairways, kind of, you know, predictable setups and, and greens. And that is not the case with Harvey Pinnock. I thought that this change, this incredible, a very difficult track with a lot of, again, I'm going to call it dynamic because of all the positions that players are put in that they have to decide if they have what it takes to get up and down from right there, or they should just play it safe. We're running back Cat Merch's seven under par, and three of those looks outside in circle two, Brian, when she's getting that hyzer to drop in from 50 feet. Well, Nate, I, I noticed in the presser the other day, she was in the background, way in the little back corner there in her practice basket, on the side of the headwind, just practicing that nose angle, almost dunking one in there in the woods. But Nate, she, she, she put the work in and every now and then on tour, you have that one practice session where everything seems to click and you're like, okay, you know, it's all done. I've got the stroke back. I know what I need to do here in these wins. And she went out there and clearly did it. Yeah. And I think that this, this course is, is kind of built more for the, the top tier of the FPO division. There were a lot of holes out there that, you know, kind of shocked me in, especially with the wind. Like if you can't get the disc up to speed, like like Merch can, like Henna can, Kristen, you're not going to be able to be in position to, to attack the green and two on those par fours. You can't score on some of those lengthy par threes. So no surprises that a player like Cat Merch out there shooting a seven under par with three overstrokes. I mean, we're talking 10 birdies out mm -hmm. there in the wind, Brian. No surprises to see her up at the top. Another player that we want to talk about, Henna, you know, Hannah can get the disc up mm -hmm. to speed. Hannah knows how to play in the wind. Her release is board flat a lot of the times, and she was able to, to fight the wind, and she finds herself six on her par. Also a thousand rated round to start this open at Austin. Well, Nate, she said, finally, when she came in for an interview today, and she said, you know, finally, I put the, the putter in the basket. She was six for eight from circle one. Mm -hmm. Didn't drop any circle two putts, but really in the wind, it, it's really up in the air. Um, but it was a great day for her overall. I mean, bogey on eight, that's almost, you know, inevitable at some point this tournament. And hole 11, only two bogeys of the round. It does hurt to get the bogey on the par five. But again, this is another great round with a lot of birdies just showcasing that this course can get pieced apart. Well, and that section right there, hole six through nine, yeah. six through eight in the woods, nine is the out in the open is the old 18 where you have to clear the golf green and that was one of the most exposed fairways of the round so to play that section just one over par that actually might be one of the best stretches of the weekend for players if we look at even players in the in the top 10 brian that section played well over par we saw Kristen tatar play that section i believe three over par with a bogey and then a double there on eight so i think you know even par one over par That'll work for you. Uh, I mean, Cat Merch going one under on six through eight. I mean, that's this weekend. If we look at total strokes over or under par there, I think that could be a good indicator of how well somebody finishes in this tournament. Mm -hmm. It seems like the OB is looming. It makes the players nervous. It makes them kind of change up their game plan. But Kristen going over par on six, seven, and eight still put together a pretty solid first day. I mean, it didn't look like she could miss. I mean, her putt on one was in the bottom of the bucket and just splashes out on the elevated basket. Then she nearly gets the eagle on two. This is her shot on three, reads the wind perfectly, connects on that 20 footer. 
This is here on five. Look this at is that. this is toward the out of bounds into a right to left ripping wind. You can't see it from the flag. Trust me, the wind was ripping. If if she misses that, she's likely putting back from 30 feet from the out of bounds. And then here this downhill shot on the fourth, Brian. This was into a ripping headwind. I was surprised that she went forehand. But in times, when times are tough, it seems like Kristen is kind of leaning on that specific nine speed with the forehand lately. Here she is, Come 55. On. This is tailwind. Unreal, Brian. I mean, just to hit those putts so solid in those right to left crosswinds from late range, but a 50 footer and a tailwind when you need it. I mean, you're not going to get tailwind putts every single hole. She capitalizes when she needs to capitalize. And then she finished clean. I mean, yeah, that middle stretch is tough for her, but like mm -hmm. she said about the weather, we're all having to play six through nine. We're yeah. all going to have tough stretches if we're just off by a little bit. So I, I think Kristen is right on the right track. Again, this is just where she was in Waco. She wasn't, you know, winning the tournament right away, but she mm -hmm. kind of crept up there, picked the uh, courses apart and found her way to the top. Katrina Allen found her way to the top as well and or close to the top. At yeah. least she's going to be on the lead card going into the second round. Four under par. Solid day for Katrina. Yeah, it's. Good to see her on a lead card. It's been some time since we've seen her, you know, play this clean of a round. We're gonna run back some of her highlights as well. This is the drive on one. She's just really struggled off the tee over the last 10 months or so. Here she is deep circle one. I mean, but Nate, that's Pink. kind of the mark of a champion though. I mean, you, you, come back when you have these types of times when there are stretches where you're going through a swing change and you're actually trying to make something happen better in the long run mm -hmm. and she went through it i mean she did it mid-season last year and she was very candid about how much of a struggle it was and now she's back throwing great shots it's got to feel good to put together a good round we talked to her after the 400 par effort let's take a listen to what she had to say all right joining us in the clubhouse now currently in solo fourth place with a 400 par effort katrina allen Kat, welcome back to Austin. Thank How'd you. it go today? Um, it went okay. I think I managed the conditions pretty good. Uh, changed my game plan a few times where I may be attacking for birdie and just made sure to get a long look, uh, lay it up for par. I kind of noticed uh, this is a direct opposite wind that we had all week. So, yeah. Just... When, it goes, when it goes like that, when it switches yeah. directions, is it just intuition at that point? Yeah, I wouldn't say, I don't know, just more like, okay, for me, I got four good practice rounds, and if the win had been the opposite, I don't think I would have had to ever even think about a tee shot. So I was just more like, I don't know, just in tune with the win today. Like knowing, okay, this hole's gonna be pretty hard to get today, and this wind is making it even more difficult. So what's a good play here, I guess? Yeah. After all the challenges you've overcome and victories you've had over your career it, yeah. are these types of days where you have to make those like split second decisions are they kind of enjoyable in yeah, a way yeah i feel like i have an advantage in these conditions i do think when i'm playing well and the conditions are like this we see me you know i i can think back to vegas in like 2012 or something where i was like shot better in 25 mile an hour wins than i had the first round you know i yeah. don't know so sometimes i think some adversity kind of helps me not focus on results just you know, uh, oh, okay. Lock in the focus. Yeah, lock in the nose angle and the line as opposed to I have to birdie, right? Exactly. So. Well, thank you for that clarity, actually. Uh, yeah. Last question for you. Tomorrow, weather seems iffy. Yeah. Uh, do you even think about that at this point, or is it just Gosh. going with the same game plan? No, I think, I think what I – the only thing I think is that I just feel comfortable on the course. Um, I'm really proud of some of the adjustments I made today. Um, and I think I can, it's probably my worst putting round of the season. I mean, it was windy, even Owen and I were both talking, but you know, she missed a lot of putts. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, I guess, yeah, I just going to think about how, I feel like I really understand what the course is asking for, feel confident, uh, in my game plan and just going to focus on that. Well, Kat, thank you so much. Good yeah. luck tomorrow. And screw hole eight. <laughs> Tough hole, Nate. Yeah, let's it, talk about hole eight, hole eight real quick. Actually, gave a lot of players a tough time. Yeah, I mean the the, the initial gap is hard until you see the 
second gap. <laughs> it's nine feet across and you have all those tiny trees in the rough. If you miss that second shot, you're you're likely bogey at best. That's why we saw so many double bogeys today is because once you get off the fairway, there's really no scramble opportunity. Oh, we're, we're flying it right now. And we're taking a look here. There's, there's three main gaps. We saw a lot of people play forehand out left, Brian. Some people are trying to, to pipe something straight and you have an eight foot gap, an eight foot gap, and maybe a five foot gap there on the right. But then you have these late gaps that are, you know, secondary to your, your initial angle. You have to get a little lucky to find the center of the fairway here. And then you're not looking at a pure straight shot to approach the green, are you, Brian? What do you got on that second? Uh, no, the second shot is really specific. And like we said earlier, all those skinny trees on the right side are just absolute jail. You're not going to be able to scramble through anything because you have to fight all sorts of one foot gaps. And this gap to get up to the basket is so much smaller than the drone is even giving it. It's you're going to sneak through the left or right side because of how skinny these trees are. So you have to be super precise. And uh, I understand why Katrina is frustrated with it because we looked at the scorecards of a lot of other players and they struggle that hole as well. With that, we are going to send it to a commercial break. We got Texas's own Mason Ford in the house starting off the top of the block. We'll see you soon. PDJ reinvests membership funding into support for programs like the Competition Endowment, Youth and Education Program, and Marco Polo Program, all of which help grow the sport in communities around the world. Get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazat, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players. They are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. We are joined here now by a fellow Texan, a uh, San Antonio local, Mason Ford. Mason, you got a great finish last week in Waco. How do you feel about that performance? I feel like it really hit home for me. And towards the end of last season, I didn't have a very good finishing. I was missing home a lot. And it felt good to still know that I belong here at the top. You put a lot of work in uh, over the past few years, and this offseason obviously worked really hard as well. I mean, talk about just being a professional on this tour and kind of the work you have to keep putting in to stay up towards the top. I feel like in the offseason, if you're not the person to forcefully make changes in your game and kind of self-diagnose maybe what I didn't do well last year, you're going to fall to the back of the pack pretty pretty quickly, especially with how fast we see everybody getting better after every offseason. It's almost like everybody just gets to that next level and that other bar is just set a little bit higher than it was the year before. Does, does that excite you? Does that push you to, to kind of be a better better player all around? And how much does it force you to refine your mindset and how you approach the game as well? As for the mindset, I think as long as I think I'm putting in more work than everybody else, I feel very confident going into the year. Now, as the year goes on, it's it's hard to still fine tune things unless you're making that extra effort, that extra time that you know everybody else mm -hmm. isn't willing to. Well, well, Mason, fast forward. You know now you have a great relationship with Mint Disc. We're here in Austin, Texas. Next week, 
uh, U.S. Women's Championship. You know, Mint's got a big part in that as well. Uh, talk about the relationship with that company, and sounds like you have a, a new disc coming out with them as well. I do. I have a, a Mustang release. We're doing a, a Ford Mustang. As funny as it sounds, it's something that I feel like the the fan base and myself have just been into for a really, really long time. And uh, my relationship with Mint and them and their course and and the brand that they're building here in Austin and Texas disc golf, I feel like is you know, just kind of setting a bar for Texas disc golf as a standard. Is this just the beginning for Mint and, and what they're planning to do in disc golf? Um, I know their their main focus last year was, you know, signing a bigger player like myself, mm -hmm. um, getting their course installed, moving to a new warehouse, got a storefront put up there where they're going to have the U.S. women's. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what their plans are after that, but I can say that this last year they got a, they got a lot done. They had a lot of food on the plate. And following up Mason Ford with another fantastic finish at Waco was Nicholas Antila. We're going to throw it to an interview we did with Nicholas Antila earlier in the, in the week. One more second place. Um, I think being second is kind of complicated because at the same time you're happy about you playing good the whole weekend. You need to play good if you want to finish on podium these days. Um, but of course being second is like heartbreaking and as an athlete you never want to be second in my mind everyone but the winner is like loser so i don't really mind if i'm like second or tenth uh, i'm losing anyway mm -hmm. i feel like i'm playing very good disc at the moment and as a disc golfer it's very easy now because i don't need to think about my throwing that much i just execute and know what i can do know what i can do and i feel like there is no shot at the least at least for myself on the course that I can do at the moment. I feel like my, I'm putting good, my forehand feel is pretty nice and also backhand hitting the gaps and stuff. I just feel like I'm going with the flow um, in those moments. And I also feel like I'm playing my best when I need to play good, uh, when I need to like birdie out or something, I'm, I'm at my best. So I like those moments a lot. He says that he plays his best golf when he needs to play his best golf. What do you uh, me, it sounds like he's got the mindset of a champion. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, got the chance to talk with him a little bit. One of them, after his loss at like, BGC to, to Gannon Burr at Kevin Jones' house, and you know, gave him some space, then we got to talk to him. And, you know, I'm like, I'm like, you're a champion. And he, he looks at me and he says, I will be. You know, he in his mind, He's a finished champion, but in his mind, until he wins out here, whether it be an elite series or a major, he's still sitting in that second place spot. And I, I don't know what the count is right now. I think, you know, better than a half dozen second place finishes at elites or majors in the past two years. But he does seem to rise up when it's late in the tournament, when it's crunch time, he just seems to go on these streaks. He seems to have that X factor that's required of champions. He also seems to have a little bit of this luck factor, a little bit of stuff like this, Brian, here on the 15th, pink. There but it I, is. I don't know, Nate. I, to me, that stuff just evens itself out. I feel like there's going to be, at the end of one's life on their deathbed, a counter of how many good kicks and bad kicks is going yeah, to pop up. Evens out. I think it's going to be evened out. I mean, we can't call him lucky because I'm sure he can tell you a million other times when it didn't go his way. And you know what? He keeps stepping up to the plate. He keeps trying. He keeps touring the U.S. He's mm -hmm. away from his home country, obviously, right now. And he's he's living the dream right now, Nate. And the fact that he still doesn't believe that he's a champion yet is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. As long as he can savor the moment when he does win those titles over in Europe, yep. I think the championship over here in the States is uh, inevitable. With that, we have the MPO action coming up this afternoon with Nicholas Antila and the crew in the MPO division. Nate, bring us into Austin, Texas. Bring us into Austin Disc Golf. Mm -hmm. Where are we right now? And, and lay it out for the fans watching. Well, Central Texas is actually one of the most popular places for disc golf in, in, in the entire world. Dallas, Fort Worth to the north, three hours north, and then two hours east is Houston. This entire Central Texas corridor consistently has the most tournaments every year the most active PDGA members, and it has the most disc golf courses of any other area in the United States. And 
We've been playing disc golf here since the 80s. Bartholomew Park, late 1980s. We've got Zilker Park in the late 1990s, which has consistently been one of the most played courses in the entire US. Taking a look at some of the scenic shots, we have the University of Texas. We have this booming skyline. Austin has just blown up. Pre-pandemic, a lot of tech moved here to Austin. Google, Apple, Tesla built a gigafactory out here. So the city's just been blowing up over the past five years. And the last two years, this tournament has coincided with the biggest music and film festival in the world. It's called South by Southwest. 250,000 people make the trek here to see the films, to see the movies, to see all the art. And we just happen to be here at the same time. We're lucky to be here at the same time. And I think we're actually lucky to be able to play the second round. We were predicting some potential hail, thunderstorms, but it looks like those storms have missed us to the north, Brian. We just have a little wind on the radar and course gets going tough when it gets windy well Nate we talked about it this morning but I, I feel like it's worth talking about again it's it's one thing to set up a temporary course on a traditional golf course you can only do so much if you use the traditional golf fairways mm -hmm. and the bunkers and whatnot you're not going to be able to cut trees they're also not going to be able to plant trees and get them to grow up and be mature by the time the tournament starts so when a golf course lets the team that runs the tournament out here actually cut lines through the woods that the golf course is built around. That makes a very special property. And Nate, those holes, as we see here, are already the talk of the tournament. They certainly are. I think everyone that we interviewed mentioned the gauntlet, they're calling it holes six through eight. These are all the brand new cut fairways that you're referring to. This is not your typical golf course. It's not a birdie fest. There's not that much airspace. And if when there is an open fairway, it's lined with OB and the wind direction out of the Northwest. It makes a lot of these holes on this late middle section challenging. We're playing into the ripping head left to right on eight, nine, 11. Crosswind here on 13. A lot of these holes that would be, you know, you could call them birdie holes if there's no wind, but when the wind gets up, we're seeing the scores right now in the MPO section. People are struggling out there, Brian. And I think that's great. I mean, all the players are saying the struggling is not great, but the fact that we presented a challenging, diverse course to the players is great. And you know what? It's not too challenging to where the players are calling it fluky. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are saying they really like the changes out here. I think the one part that people are questioning is how tight some of the white stake OB is yep. on some of those wooded holes. In regards to your personal opinion on mm -hmm. that concept, can it be done? Uh, and can it be done well? And I mean, I'm not commenting on these yeah. holes at all. What, what are your thoughts on that course design element? Yeah, I mean, I think they used the out of bounds in the woods, not necessarily to just punish the player, but they really used it because some of that rough is just mm -hmm. unplayable. If, if you actually walk the grounds out here and you look at the density of the rough, we have these, these really small scrappy trees, and then you have the what they call the smilax the thorns of texas what what really makes you bleed when you go into the rough out here it's almost unplayable terrain so that's why they put the ob line up there to kind of you know prevent players from having to get on their hands and knees to get behind a lie to then progress like 10 feet so i think the ob plays out here there's no doubt there's going to be some instances where players are getting kicks. They're going to be out of bounds and they're going to be out of position. So they're going to get that double punishment, but it just makes you think on those holes in the woods. Yeah. You know, Nate, I, I actually kind of like it and I like it again for a safety component. I mean, you have the Smilax. There's also a lot of honey locust out here, just terrible thorns and not talking little tiny ones. We're talking thick thorns that could cause some serious damage. So in regards to safety and also keeping the flow of play going, I don't think it's a bad bad choice to do it on these holes. Uh, Nate, one thing I want to key in on, though, we have a guy coming here who won last week. We have a guy who is defending this week. He's kind of the talk of the tour right now. Gannon Burr, he's gotten second place as his worst finish at the Chess.com Invitational. I have to say, in regards to Perk's picks, I was a big dummy this morning and chose the one guy who wasn't at this tournament in Ricky Wysocki. So my 
choice is going to be changed to this man right here. It almost <laughs> feels not fair with how good he's playing, yeah. but I'm going with Gannon. And you know what? He still has to show up and play three solid rounds of golf. Yeah, he does. I mean, he, he certainly is the favorite on tour right now, but no matter what, I mean, third place is impressive anywhere you go from any player. So he still has to bring the heat. I think that, you know, no matter what course you present to this guy right now, he has all the shots. Mm -hmm. And he's finally figured out, you know, his new putter, the link with this mania. So he, he's going to be a threat. Look at him, this M2 shot. I this know I know you love this thing from last year, One of my favorite shots of the year. It's such a stubborn putter that he forced over on the ante, and it just resisted the turn the whole way, flattened at the end, just showcasing some really high IQ shaping. And look at that. I mean, first of 2023 DGPT victory. It's funny that Calvin and Isaac were the ones being talked about the most for years. Five of it's mm -hmm. with almost all of the top players in the world there. I mean, this is just incredible. And yeah, he's 18 years old, Nate. Just ridiculous stuff at such a young age. Unfortunately, he lost the hat. He says maybe his grandpa has the yeah. hat. He doesn't know. He can't wear it anymore. So we're not seeing Cowboy again this weekend. Yeah, well, there there was a you know a chance he he said he might walk out with a cowboy hat on hole one and potentially the whole round, but. <laughs> The man just loves to, to joke, doesn't he? I mean, I can't, I still can't tell when we talk to him if if he's being serious when he tells us that he's afraid, that he's just afraid of this hole, afraid of this course, or that he's not putting well. I, I really just think he's pulling strings and just totally messing with us because he's dialed. <laughs> well, Nate, uh, it's funny. He's one end of the spectrum and then i think someone who we have to talk about who almost took him down last weekend is kind of that more serious uh kind of straightforward guy and luke humphreys almost taking down the victory in dramatic fashion last weekend and with putts like this i mean nate is there anyone better at that shallow circle two putt is he in the conversation for best on tour oh certainly i mean just look at his percentages from that specific range he calls it the little bunny hop you know, and, I, and I, I like it right there. And that putt on two was actually a big moment in that final round. It got him back on track because he three putted the first hole. Didn't seem like it was going to go his way. And then this shot on 16 and the putt coming up is going to live with Luke and with a lot of us forever. This is just electricity. Man. Look at him. Look at the crowd. He knows there's a lot of people pulling for him. Nate. I love in the press conference earlier this week, he said, you know, I used to give Nico garbage for running his putts in the basket. He said, no, you got to play it cool. You got to walk the putts in. And then he finally has the moment where he can't help himself but to run the putt in the basket. And then he apologized to Nico for forgetting that, oh, yeah, when the adrenaline's flowing, all, all bets are off. And, yeah, just an incredible weekend, Nate. Uh, we, we have to talk about one more player. I think there's so many people we can talk about that could take this tournament down, but uh, kind of the wild card this week is Calvin Heimberg, who for mm -hmm. the first time really in a long time, maybe ever since he's been on tour, is out with an injury and finally is back. Uh, but elbow injuries seem to be plaguing the whole tour and it's never yep. fun. And, and coming back never seems to be uh, certain for players. Yeah, it, it is unfortunate. And he's talked about what specifically it's bothering him on and it's really the forehand and it actually sounds similar to what Kristen Tatar was dealing with that ulnar nerve entrapment he's getting a little bit of the tingling when he does release a forehand and hopefully he can find a solution to that because that's a type of injury that can just linger mm -hmm. with you forever if you're not sleeping on it correctly if you're if you're sleeping with it bent if you're trying to throw forehands th throughout the season so I still feel like Calvin is going to get right back on the saddle here this season. I think that the rest of his game is, is just too good to see, you know, the forehand take him out of contention mm -hmm. each week. So that's that's why I'm going with him for my perks pick of the week to make one of the leader chase cards. Well, Nate, we will just have to find out. We are throwing it down to the ground for Ian and Philo to take us through the first round of competition here for the MPO division. Nate, we're gonna wrap things up, take a look at some hot scores so far. Hebenheimer and Anderson, seven under par, early great rounds for those two young men. Brian Earhart, Nate Perkins, wrapping things up. We will see you tonight, folks.
It's not over until it's over here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. In the moment, you want to have the win be easy. But at the end of the day, when you go back and watch the video, it's always sicker if it's done in a cool fashion like that. What a shot by Gannon. The open it. It's not over. Defend after the big win in Waco. Big win here last year. And welcome into beautiful Austin, Texas for the Open in Austin presented by Flight Factory Discs. We're at the newly updated Harvey Pinnock course. This is a great challenge for the field. Who can ride the bull for all 18 holes? You'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. Philo, let's watch the Disc Golf. Welcome into the booth. Ian Anderson right here, major champion Philo Brathwaite right there. It's the Gannon Burr Show right now, Philo. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Brella did start off the year with that yeah. hot note, and now Gannon, Gannon's taking over the, the momentum, if you will, with that big win in Waco yeah. last week. And as we've been talking about, and you just heard in Tournament Central, defending champion from last year, Gannon right. Burr is. And he's playing hot, and he's looking confident. He's looking pretty cool, calm, and collected out there. The Iceman doing Iceman things. You think about who you want making some clutch putts right now? I can't think of a different name, Philo. <laughs> He's that guy. He is that He's guy, shown right? us that, you know, we saw him at USDGC a couple of years ago, and he came out and did that to the field, and you know, it was so impressive. Like, we flipped the page, man. It's a new generation, and he's that guy again in Burr. We saw what he did last year at Austin, the final hole, icing this tournament with a very impressive approach shot into this very dangerous green, which is now hole nine. And he won it from the chase card, and when nobody from the lead card could even catch him. Finally. That's a true story. He really put together an impressive final round here last year, and he collected that trophy. I remember calling the win from the chase car. I was like, I don't think I've ever done this before. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah, <laughs> you know? that's pretty rare. <laughs> it, it really is, when everyone's mathematically eliminated pretty much. And then last weekend in Waco, man, another clutch victory. Yeah, he <laughs> I don't know how these guys put themselves in this position over and over and over again, just throw shots like this. I mean, when you need it the most, absolute dime, and then this putt here to finish things off. So easy to miss. <laughs> you know that emotion. You can see it. You can hear it. That's this is kind of new for Gannon. He's showing a lot of raw emotion. It's really cool to see. It. Yeah. Big smile there. Love to see it. Absolutely. And here are his stats from Waco. Just posterized the field. Giving him the business, as they say. <laughs> He's <laughs> pretty much leading in all categories last week. Top three all around. That's doing some work out there. Yeah. Off the tee on the green. We got a circle be, two. I mean, those C1X, when you're making that high percentage like that, that just boosts your confidence for all the other putts. And he, for the first time in his career, Philo, leading the pro tour in points, man. That might be the. become the new norm. Come and get me. Yep. And we've got last year's point champion, Calvin Heimberg. Teeing on one a few moments ago. A lot of wind pushing out here this afternoon. For these guys, it's going to be blowing from right to left. Calvin Heimberg, perfect wind read inside circle one to start things off. The one down start for Calvin Heimberg. Would go on to make that putt. Beautiful look at downtown Austin and your can of current conditions. He doesn't look quite down. that blue. <laughs> it's a little gray out here today, everybody. Gray, yeah. Man, the wind is up. Pretty That's sustained winds in that 20 mile an hour category. Definitely going to make things interesting out here this afternoon, especially with how narrow the majority of these holes are out here. Can't imagine it's going to be fun out here on these open holes with 20 miles an hour wind blowing around. We saw it this morning, and it's only, I think the wind's up about 10 it miles is. an hour since It was then. calm and kind of sunny this morning. Yeah, it it started off pretty rough early this morning. We were considering potential, maybe not. Playing today. I heard some, the FPL, word. some one FPL player just, just didn't even show up. Didn't show. No can do. It turned out to be a beautiful morning. Yeah. They're going to be your sports people. It's Justin and Josh. J and J. Okay. Johnson and Johnson. Okay. We're, we're good. You're ready to go. Wow. 
Welcome back to the open announcement presented by Flight Factory Disc. This is a feature card, your 335 MPO. First up on the tee box from Germany, sponsored by MVP and Grip Equipment, Simon Lazar. Congrats to Simon on 200K YouTube subscribers. Just hit that. Wow. Right? That is awesome. He blew right past me. Simon looking for the one angle, one turn. Dig in Heiser. That'll work just on the back side of the bullseye. Well in circle one. Next up on the tee box from Criola, Alabama. Sponsored by West Side Kiss and Saban. You know him as Matty O. Matthew Aura! Picking up the Saban sponsorship, that's big right there. That's pretty <laughs> big. I like that. Everybody would like to get in that Saban pocket, right? <laughs> and Matty O, a little lower line than we saw from Simon Lazat. Looking for a skip. Purple people leader. About the same distance. South Carolina, the team captain of this draft, Paul Yulibary. Yeah. Oh. Yuli coming up a really nice showing at Waco, Philo. Nice one. Yeah, he and Jerm. Look at the whole uh, Jomez gang kind of popped off at Waco. It's pretty fun. There you go. I think they're all top 20. And a beautiful look down from our Flight Factory drone. You can use code AUSTIN for 10% off all weekend long at FlightFactoryDisc.com. How about that shot from Yuli? Perfect. Somebody's closer. Sponsored by Mint Disc and Lucky Egg Disc. Mason Ford. Got to hear from Mason Ford at Tournament Central. Get to watch him throw now. Pretty routine drive here at the first for these guys, 400 foot. It's a friendly start, isn't it? Friendly start. Most of these guys, probably fairway driver under the conditions. Really don't need high speed driver here. That looks a little inside, unless if it's extremely straight, that wind's definitely going to push it. And he does out there in circle two for Mason Ford. Let's see what he does on the elevated pin from that distance. Maybe it's a little bit. going to be a bit of, bit of headwind for him from that direction. Uh -huh. There's Valerie Mondohano, Mason's partner. We got to watch her play this morning. Let's check out this drive by Yuli, powered by our friends at Nakwa. Showing you how to do it. Driving it out there along the right side. It's all about anticipation out here in the wind. Pick a good spot, let the disc do the work. Beautiful. My goodness. What a nestle. Ring around the rosy, huh? Better way to start your day than the one. Speaking of ones, Randon Lotta. How about that? What a oh. shot, too. 360 up the hill on hole three. Ooh, he got to see that in a minute. Ah, that's unbelievable, man. People like don't even get in a circle on that one. Sometimes it's there, but yeah, tough. Heinberg on two. Looking to bend the corner a little. Yeah, if you sit down right around there, you can have a nice angle. Yeah. A little longer than most, but still a nice straight shot. Let's check out Philo's Philosophy, brought to you by our friends at BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Bring your control game this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. This course is technical. It may seem like it's a big, wide-open ball golf course, but the ropes are up, the woods are tight, the OB's in the woods. I don't think you're going to see the guys with the massive long arm take advantage, but on maybe two shots on the whole track, you got to really play placement out here. Make adjustments with the wind is really going to play huge over the weekend because the wind has switched directions 180 degrees from their practice rounds, I was told. It was coming out of the northwest today, coming from the southeast. So they're going to have to kind of rethink a couple of these shots out yeah. here, especially with the ups and downs of the golf course. And as always, you got to make putts, man. If you're not making putts, you're not going to win. I don't really think it's going to be that you need a lot of circle twos, but you're going to give yourself a lot of opportunities from shallow circle one, those yeah. circle's edge putts that you're really going to need to capitalize and connect with. 
different putting situation than we saw in Florida. We were, yeah. I feel like this course is going to be similar to that. It's, it's so? not the longest of courses, but it's very technical, you know, and mm -hmm. you can't just throw wild out here and think good things are going to happen for you. Mason Ford playing smart early, lays up for par, Warren for two. for Orem. Simon to match. This is a Ford par, followed by a Yulibari drop in birdie to start his day. Get it, Yuli. Nothing like putting with your driver on the first hole. That's how you do it. Going to jump over to hole two again for Calvin Heinberg and his second shot. You saw the drive. Trick about this second shot are those late trees. Heinberg trying to split the wickets played into the hill. That should slide right up there for Calvin. On a rope at the bucket. That was. I mean, that was, <laughs> as they say, you could hang the clothes on that line. Oh, love that. Perfectly straight. And a two for two start for Calvin Heinberg. Maybe he's going to wake up this weekend, huh? Look out field if that's the case. Yeah, he has been having arm issues the first couple of years, so maybe he's feeling a little bit better. But sticking in a break on the network, we'll be back to the action in just a few. I've been rocking these polos all year. I love the breathability and comfortability. It allowed me to perform at a high level. Check them out at flightfactorydisc.com. I think this golfing can improve our community in many ways. It brings people together. That maybe some of these kids who feel a little bit lost could find something like disc golf, find friends, find people to come together and play the sport. Encouraging people to work together, kids to know one another, love one another. A way for these kids to have a really fun thing to do together. I think that's what we need in the world, love one another and do life together. One thing we all love about disc golf is it's a lifetime sport. Whether you play pro, am, juniors, or senior grandmasters, we all want to play this sport as much as we want and for as long as we want. This can introduce wear over time, potentially hindering your ability to continue playing. A cart reduces the cumulative stress on your body that comes with repetitive motions such as reaching down and lifting. This will help keep you on the course, maximizing your athletic potential, and playing your best. Yeah, and talking about talent, here's Jonathan. Stepping up to tee off, looking very good. Uh, look at those muscles, working that drive. Well, he clearly works out, and that drive is oh. amazing. Oh my god, once in a lifetime shot. Not for Jonathan, it isn't. I'm going to keep my eye on this guy. Not going to be very hard, considering how good he looks. Look how stellar. Yo. Check it out. Oh, jävlar. Snacked. The Open at Austin is presented by Flight Factory Discs. Use code AUSTIN to get 10% off at FlightFactoryDiscs.com all weekend long.
Welcome back to the action. Mason Ford on the tee at two. That's a really nice shot. That is a bonus drive, isn't it? Yeah. A little tight, perhaps. If he goes sidearm again, he's really going to like that. Yeah. Leninus Carlson off to a great. Oh. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Gosh, is he two off the lead right now? Last I checked, it was seven. Yeah. Dang. Nice Swedish superstar showing yeah. up big out here in Texas. It's about time he starts popping off. That guy's oh. a tremendous talent. Yeah, he is. Speaking of funny ads, we saw the Gannon Burr Heimberg ad. Love it. The Carlson has the one where he loses his boat motor. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I like that one a lot, too. Gannon Burr nailing the Calvin Heimberg putt, though. <laughs> the impression was spot on. It was so good. Calvin started two for two, but has a very long look on hole three. I don't know if it's something you want to get too aggressive on. It slopes away. It does receive it, but it could catch an edge and run. Calvin, that's a layup for sure. It definitely was, huh? Uh, smart play there. Yep. We saw Gannon Burrow roll about 80 feet on that hole last year. Remember that one? <laughs> there is the ice man in the building. About 10 minutes before we'll see Gannon Burr take the tee of one. No two-stroke penalty was there, Philo. It's not time. Did that happen to somebody yes, recently? Yes, this morning, dude. <laughs> Who that? Holly. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah it happened to me once. <laughs> Did it really? <laughs> one time. <laughs> Winter time open, one of my early years. At your home course, bro? Yeah, man. <laughs> Philo. I had to work. Oh, okay. All right. I'll give you that one then. I had to go to work the night before, and I overslept. And <laughs> oh, no. Thank God I'm only eight minutes away from Oak Grove. <laughs> I was probably the fastest I've ever driven in my life. How many holes did you miss? I was halfway through the first hole. So oh, okay. I, you got it. Plus. I took the, the snowman uh -huh. on the first hole. We are looking at Matt Orem, the drive OB, throwing three. The lane's there, Philo, if you can hit it. It's there. It's a pump, though. It's long, yeah. He's got this branch in his face jumping around, too. Hopefully that doesn't distract him or impede the swing. A little hyzer flip action there for Matty Ode. Got this thing drifting. Oh, that's really nice for Matt Orem. Just outside the circle. Oh, in oh, the he's circle. Dead. Definitely, yeah, that back edge there is circle Dang. one for sure. Really impressive shot. That was. <laughs> Pride of Austin there, Bradley Williams. And back to two for Yuli and his second. Looks a little early. Big flare skip. Gets off yeah. the green at least. Got off the green. He's about 75 feet, 80 feet away from the bucket. Yep. Maybe a little longer. Feels about 100 feet from the back edge of the green. There's Ezra Robinson. First time All-Star this year. Brother of world champion Isaac Robinson on your screen now. A par putt on three. That's a nice up and in there from Isaac. Bit of a death putt. Definitely drops off on the back end. And with that tailwind, very impressive to see him get it up in the air. Truth. Par start for Robinson. Back to two for Simon in his second. Burner for Lazat barely travels 150 feet at that. I mean, if it's, Perplexion. If it's a little better, it probably finds OB. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. It might have been a good break. Yeah. And Nicholas almost took it down at Waco. That was amazing. That back nine he put on to put on a move. Back in the field. Really impressive. Let's take a look at that actually. I think we got that racked up for you. Huge make. That's his comfort zone right yeah, around there, 70, really 75 feet. Yeah, they always come in at just the nicest pace, you know, give it a scare half the time they go in. It seems like everything this young man throws has the appropriate pace and touch to it. Yeah. So good at that. Nice little well, break except for there. for this one. Yeah. I mean, that <laughs> one got away from him, a little bit of fortune. Got lucky. Good clutch putt. That's on 16, I believe. Showing some emotion out there, the young Finn. Oh, that was 15, excuse me. This is 16. This is a big shot, Philo. 
at 450 some odd feet up the hill on a frozen rope. Crazy impressive. Doesn't look like he's doing much either. Yeah, yeah he's got that kind of double G swing where it doesn't look hard, but it, it sure goes. And this is the shot he knew got away from yeah. him here at the 17th. Would go on to take the bogey, didn't run the putt, laid it up. That opened the door for uh, Gannon Burr there to walk through the door on the 18th and lock it up. Still one heck of a performance for Nicholas Dantala. So awesome to have him here stateside to see him performing like this. Forward after a great drive, throwing his second. Hung it out there a little much. Gonna have a circle two look. A little bit of drop off there. Yeah. Looking at Heimberg on the tee of four. Big downhill shot. It's not as long as it seems. Says 460 playing very much so downhill. Probably gonna feel like a 380 because you want to play it off the back of this ball golf green you're gonna see here. Don't really need to fly it too much further than that. That looks great. My man, Vinny. He understood the assignment, Ian. <laughs> he sure did. Simon with his third. Oh, beautifully done there from Lazat into the face of the hill. Kills the speed. Tap in for his par. After the errant second shot. Got away with that one. Yuli from distance for birdie. Probably laying this up. Maybe a half go? Nope. I wouldn't go after it. Too many things could happen there. There's OB inside circle one left. The, what, 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 That's the 187, 180, I believe. 181? 183? Something like that. I like how there's like a, a, a road and a freeway and then a toll road. There's just roads everywhere in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy driving around here, man. A little bit. Yeah. If you're not from around here, it could be a little intimidating. Yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> people move fast. Yeah, they do. The speed limit's like 75, man. In, in the it's city. not a bad thing, no, man. It's I, not a bad thing. I dig it, man. Especially when you know where you're going, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, hurt. That, that's true. Ford for birdie. Step through at the death putt and nails it. Orem next. This will be for par. A really great par after the OB drive. It's not often you get an up and down from that far back. Typically not. Well earned third shot to get him to this position. A little bit of heading crossing win from here for Matt Orem. See if he can dial it in. Low out the gate for Orem, and that'll turn into a bogey. Almost redeemed himself there. Not very, complaints. very close. Sneaking in a break on the network. Back to the action in just a few. PDJ reinvests membership funding into support for programs like the Competition Endowment, Youth and Education Program, and Marco Polo Program, all of which help grow the sport in communities around the world. Get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join. back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Discs that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. Z-Lite, more distance with less effort.
the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. Hi everyone, I'm Des Redding, Hall of Famer. So excited with my new signature series disc, the GOAT. I use the GOAT for all sorts of shots. The big open field hyzers, with some Annie with that strong flex and reliable fade. Or on those windy days when you need that confidence, dead level, it's gonna slay that headwind. The GOAT, get out and throw. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazak, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players, they are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. Welcome back to the Disc Golf Network. We are flying back into hole one for your feature card. Should be teeing off very shortly. How about those two names up at the top of the leaderboard there, huh? Jake Ebenheimer and Joey Buckets back uh -huh. in the mix. I like Ebenheimer's game, man. When that guy is on the field, man, he, he can really put a move on the disc. He crushes the disc, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's kind of scary how hard he throws so yeah. Welcome back to the Open It All. It's a lot of fun to watch him play, though. It is, man. Sponsored by the tree a couple years ago back at the Veterans VPO, Veterans Park Open. Mm. Oh, my we really goodness. appreciate this. This is a 355 feature card. Your last MPO card for the day. First up from Austin, Texas. He's a prior Open winner. He's sponsored by Inner the Disc and Bang and Chain. Magic! Brilliant! One of the smoothest, most technical throwers there is, Philo. I would agree with that comment. Absolutely a technician. He's got some pop in that game, too. It's he not does. like he just throws them smooth and slow. No. He, he can make them go. That's going to trickle out there into circle two for Bradley Williams. A little bit of a headwind coming back up on the celebrator. Sponsored by Prodigy Disc and Flight Factory, Ezra Robinson. Up on the tee from Urbandale, Iowa. He was your 2021 Rookie of the Year, 2022 U.S. Disc Golf Champion. He's our 23 returning Open Champion, sponsored by Discmania and Squatch Disc Golf. Get it, Bert. Check the distance, the angle looks great. Oh, all right, that dribbled inside circle one for Gannon. Should have a little bit of a tailwind putt. Crossing tailwind. From Finland, sponsored by Dismania, Nicholas Antila. <laughs> Gannon's caddy, Matt, giving us the eyes there, per the usual. What a fun guy. He's great, man. Gannon's man in the chair. I wonder how many strokes per round Matt saves in. He's good with for a at least good two, attitude, right? You know what I yeah. mean? Just somebody keeping you loose. Oh, this looks like this could also be finishing a little left. Let's check the skip. And it does. A little early and left for Nicolas Antela, just outside circle two. Let's see what these guys can manufacture here on the first. Jumping ahead to Yuli on three, putting for birdie. You saw the drive. Ooh. 
Good settle. Yeah, good effort there. Happy to see that thing sit down. That could roll away towards out of bounds in a hurry. On hole 10, Linus Carlson. This could get blown out of bounds so fast. The wind is ripping left to right here. Yeah, it seems like the backhand might be the play there, Philo. I would, wind. I would definitely consider it. There's a ton of space to the left if you're going to make any mistake there at the 10th. Mason Ford with a good putt. Oh, that's a birdie. Nice, Mason. Nice one. Yeah, that drive looked pretty solid. Yeah, it did. I didn't realize I got, I got that close, though. Down there is Bradley Williams. He's with our very own Nate Perkins. Take it away, Nate. All yours, my man. Bradley, you've kind of been a full-time nomad ever since you hit the tour. Do you still feel like you're at home here in Austin? You know, not really. I don't feel like I've connected with like the local clubs or the community as much. Even when I come back, I feel like I'm just kind of playing a couple rounds here and there by myself. But I don't, I don't feel like I'm immersed in the culture like I used to be. So completely different wind direction from practice as per usual out here on the tour. How do you feel like it affects your mindset heading into the round? It sort of puts me into like a panic and a frenzy because I don't know what to do. A <laughs> little bit of an ace run there on the first. How are you feeling about the nerves right now? Uh, they're pretty uh, high. Okay. So hopefully we can like let the blood settle and <laughs> make it smooth it out from here. Thanks for the interview, Bradley, and good luck on the round. Thank you, Bradley and Nate. Bradley, he'll give it to you straight, man. You know? He's a straight shooter, man. Yeah, absolutely. Big congrats to Perkins. He just uh, met his fiance there. He's, in, he's another one on the engaged list. That's right, so man. Congratulations to Perkins uh -huh. and his lovely wife to be. Antela first. Tried to ride that wind. I saw, I could oh, see the okay, idea there. Okay. He knew the wind was going to do something to it. Just gave it a little too much respect and tossed out an old air nugget, as Champ likes to say. <laughs> I thought he might go for a flat putt there. You know, to come Turn it over a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. The crossing. It helps to keep it a little slower as well when you do that, yeah. I, I believe. Oh, sure, sure. Williams, can he find the range from circle two? Nothing doing there for Mr. Williams at the first. A better miss at least, that'll be a tap in par. Burr for birdie. Tester range here, six paces off the bucket. Gannon Burr's not missing that, but Philo. <laughs> and that after using almost all those 30 seconds, you better make that thing. Take your time, settle down those early nerves, mm -hmm. knock that first one in. Let's see if he can pick up the pace here the rest of the round. That's kind of been one of those things with Gannon. The pace is kind of hit miss with the... It has been, yeah. You know, when he gets into that nice, comfortable flow, I love seeing that for him. Nicholas coming back for par. That's a nice up and in. It really was. And Robinson for birdie. Hey, nice putt by Ezra. Good way to start the afternoon. Speaking of Ezra's, Aider hold. Started four down through five holes, including an eagle on hole five. That's the hole that the long arms are going to be licking their chops at on this course. That's okay. really the only one you can let the dog out and bark. You know, <laughs> that's, that's it. Four going down the hill. 
Ooh. Ooh. Oh. No. Too early on the entrance into the ground. Heimberg. Not going for the eagle. This is the birdie play. It is crushed, though, Philo. Yeah, he threw that about 525 feet on the line. Oh, my gosh. Four inches off the ground. Just ridiculous, man. Back to Orem on four. Oh, that's the wind right there, guys. That's the win. Wow. The action on that thing. That overstable caught up at the end. <laughs> it finally did its job. Yeah. Yeah, it really got a great skip, didn't it? Big skip. Robinson on the TF5. The Isaac version. Yeah, a little short. That could dig in and go out. Did it? It looks red. Yeah. That's out there, oh, red man. for Robinson. Robinson off to a slow start. He'll be playing five for par now after the well, Unfortunately, it's a short par four, pretty straightforward. Yeah. You like his chances for the up and down. And, uh, Isaac Robinson actually missed the cut at the Waco Annual Charity Open, finished 47th place. There were some big names that missed the cut there. That happens. It's, it's going to continue to happen on right. tour as the level of the competition that's in the field continues to, to rise. You're just going to see that more and more. Some top-notch names out of the cash. Yeah. Robinson tee shot on two is inbounds. Not every, bit, every bit of the left edge of that fairway. Might be a little congested on the way into the green from that far left. It Not is, much yeah. of a window from what I remember. We're going to the forehand play. You'll love this if you've got it. That's ideal right there, Ian. That is really nice. Set up the gap perfectly. Beautifully. Williams. He is fantastic on both sides. I'll show you the forehand. A little bit of yank, see if this thing snaps back. Avoids those trees. Ah, clobbers one right at the base of it. Kills the skip. That might be okay for the line. The line's going to be good, but he's going to have to pump one up there about 400 feet. Yeah, kind of himself off more, more or less. Enthala. Better line than what Matt Orham had, though. Okay. Waving this thing down, OB on the right side sneaks up in a hurry and he has found it. That is very pinched off along the right side. Not much of an angle to work with at all to attack. Especially when you go in there early. Second shot for Heimberg on five. And that's an easy birdie for Calvin. Playing really well to start the day. Yeah, he's rolling early. It's nice four, comfortable. four down through five once that goes in. Orem. There you go. That's more like it, Matt Orem. Using all of Force Fairway. That was a bogey for Ford after he saw the OB drive. AB for Eagle on hole five. Bit of a death putt. Can he? Get it high enough, did not. <laughs> that's a dangerous putt, Ian. That's oh, not yeah. one of those things you just want to throw it out there. And there's no worries, you know. Catch the left side of that, that cage and. Bye bye. Yep. Rolling OB. Probably OB. 
AB has not finished outside the top five this season. That's it's two events, but it's still pretty awesome. Absolutely, man. It's hard to finish in first if you don't get off to a good start. Yeah. Especially for that Tour Series win. That's always a nice one to get. Yeah. Early, you know, early in the season, get that monkey off the back, you know? That and just, I'm saying, the season as a whole, when you're playing, you know, you're playing for points. Uh -huh. It's really hard to be at the top of the mix if you don't start out at the top, mm. you know what I mean? And I you gotcha. haven't really seen too many guys come flying up the ranks, you know, to, to win a tour championship. So if that's one of your goals on the season, it's very helpful to get off to a good, solid start, win a tournament or two. Mm -hmm. A live look down from our Flight Factory drone at the fairway of two. While they do that, five with Orem playing for birdie. I like that play. You get right about those whiskers there. Straight forward. You can use the face of the hill to kill the speed with another sidearm or a backhand pit, well, but, excuse me, putter or midrange. Mm -hmm. Smart play in there. Back to two for Williams in his second. Feels like this is asking for a lot, Philo. I think we're going to see something similar to Paul Ulibar's shot. If he gets a hold of this, it's going to skip over the back edge of the green, and he's going to have 90, 100 feet in. I don't know if he's got enough pop to get it all the way there. It's, it's a long carry. Low ceiling. There you go. Skipping it off the back edge of the green. Should be a friendly roll. Curl up. There you go. Okay. Right around 80, 90 feet for Bradley. <laughs> that's, that's a nice future prediction right there, my man. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you just know that's what's going to happen. Yeah. There's not much else to shoot for. That's true, huh? This is what I was saying here with Robinson. He's right. in a little bit of a dilemma, a little too far left. Not a lot of room on the left of this tree. Shots also working against the wind. Will this one sit down on edge? And it will for Robinson. Pull six, Calvin Heinberg. Four down through five. Oh, this is the first real test on the course here. Yeah. Got a mandatory about 150 feet off the tee pad, and that is looking bad there for Calvin it? Heimer. Yeah, oh, he am. yanked that, so most likely headed to the drop zone for Calvin. Ouch. Barella. Smooth down the center. You probably won't see one much better than that all weekend. There's not much else that you can do. There's barely anything. Simon on five, going for the eagle. Oh, he's, he's talking in German, Philo. That's not a good sign. Excuse me. Man, my allergies are kicking my butt today. Yeah, Texas is working us right now, man. Woo! Nicholas grabbing his meter in. Perk, you're down there on the ground. What is Nicholas looking at here for his second shot? And what would you draw up as, as his caddy? Well, he's taking the smart play right now and backing his lie up because he was out of bounds directly in line. He's going to be just inside 400 feet. I believe his only option to get up and down is the forehand, but the wind is playing right to left up there, so it's kind of hurting him if he's forced to swing it wide on the hyzer. Although he can get pretty crafty with those backhand turnovers if he chooses to try and slide one off the edge of the green. Tough shot coming up. Yeah, I agree with you there, Nate.
Conceding for the bogey. Yeah, he is. Oh, maybe not. Ooh, he's got a chance at that putt. That has some push on it. I didn't see that coming. No. He's sneaky like that, though, isn't he? Orem throwing two on five, playing this one for birdie. Got to get on the ground. There it is. It's very sticky there. Good shot from Matt Orem. Keeps him in circle one. Back to two for Gannon Burr in his second. Great drive. Force over sidearm. That needs to get down in a hurry. OB comes up quick. He has found that. A bit of trouble for Burr. <laughs> yeah, I'm questioning that shot selection myself. There's a big gap over there for the righty backhand throw, and it kills the speed if you throw it correctly. Yeah. I don't know. Simon on five. Park for birdie. The drive was nowhere near where he wanted it, but it was in bounds and far. Yeah, there's plenty of space back there on hole five to rip it super straight and super long. Nothing to worry about. It's all left. It's where all the danger is. So if you're just playing for your birdie, you know, if you're going to go for the eagle, play that shot a bit more aggressive for a left turn at the end. Heimberg missed the Mando, now throwing the three from the drop zone. You're not getting up and down for par from here. Not feeling it, Philo? <laughs> no, sir. It's too technical. There's too many trees, and this, that's probably out of bounds again. There's not a lot of room to work with. No. That was the tee pad I was most confused on with my walk yesterday. Like, what are they doing here? I think AB showed him how to do it, but that's yeah. an extremely aggressive shot. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see the whole field do that. I saw a safer forehand play. You see that one off of the left a little I bit? I did, yeah. It's not going to get you the birdie, though. And you don't need much off the tee to get lined up. It's just can you stop it in the middle of the fairway? Yeah. It's hard. Williams. Got caught up. Ninja Branch. Did not take those into consideration, did he? I don't think he saw that. Yeah. Robinson. Online but low for Robinson. We'll have that left for par. Speaking of par, I believe that's Gannon Burr's putt coming up after the OB second. Almost did it to him again. Yep. Just a little short on that bit. And can Nicholas save par? Great shot after the OB, OB drive just to get to here and have a circle two's chance. Looks like the wind is down. There's a bit of trees and foliage over here off to the right, breaking up some of that wind. This is something to take advantage of here for Nicolas Antela. I see that flag pretty still. What a fantastic par save. How about that? Gritty. Yeah. Let's roll back a Zucker replay. That's called using your noggin right there for Nicholas Antela. Didn't like the lie from the original place. The yeah. disc went out of bounds. Did you know what? I'm going to maintain my composure here and think of a good small, you know, golf play to do next. And hey, it's best if I take this back, open up my angle, execute it, got it up and in. High disc golf IQ. Yep. Every time we watch him play. Williams, the high tree branch hit doesn't cost him as he makes the par putt. Burr will hope for the a bogey. Back where he started at even, Robinson. That's a par. He listed a one down as they head to three. 
Back to six. Oh, Philo, you called it, man. OP. Throwing five now. Oh. Par four six. It's not like I'm wanting these things but to happen, but I walked the course. I did my notes. You know, I've done my homework, and you can just tell like when yeah. something happens, this is probably what's going to happen. Right. Not wishing bad upon any of these guys ever. Just, you can kind of feel it, and see it coming based on the shot shape and the, the surroundings of the fairways. You just know it's going on. That looks great. Circle's edge for Calvin. Try to get that into six. They've got him putting for double bogey circle one. So they did get in there pretty nicely. Barella. Oh, no. At least it stayed in bounds. Yeah, you could throw a great drive here and just have nothing. Yeah, no, totally true. That was a moment ago with AB, now live with Barella. Pretty routine up and down here for AB. Plenty of space to swing this in. Catches another one. A bit of work left. I think he just hung it out there a bit too much. Exactly. Robinson on the tee of three. Oh, Randon Lotta rang this up for a one earlier. Maybe that was the line. I guess it's got to be, right? Solid play there for Robinson. Yeah, it was a great drive. All that stuff off to the right, all that tree, all the foliage off to the right there is all safe thinking anybody's really going to try to utilize that airspace, but just to keep in mind for you folks watching at home. Roller from Williams. Got to get over on edge. Oh, no. He squared up that tree dead center. It could have done what happened to Simon, though, right? Where True. He could have gone long in yeah, OB. OB. He That's can turn that into a par. Exactly. Still yeah. unfortunate. I'm not sure if I really like Roller on this hole under the circumstances. With that OB? So not just close. with the OB, but the wind, the shape of the hill. The hill. I mean, I, I get it what they're going for, but so hard to predict what's going to happen when you throw a roller out there with the wind blowing 20 miles an hour. It is definitely rolling the dice. Antara. A live look down at Nicholas from our Fly Factory drone. Ooh. Backhand up the middle. Simmer down, simmer down. Just good enough. Green flag. Oh, my. He's about a half a step from crossing that line. He's got a safe look. He likes putting from distance, so True. he should have a nice aggressive putt here. Gannon Burr, can he bounce back off the bogey on two? Ah, he's looking up there, Ian. I saw Cole try this shot yesterday. And he swing it back late. Gannon, look oh at this, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh. Circles edge downhill into the headwind left for Gannon Burr here at the third. Maybe that's how Randon got it. Big Heiser smash. He's got the arm for it's, it. That'd be a very pokey and hopey. It's not a clean line, yeah. but that would be special. Let, let's check out our Flight Factory replay from up above as Gannon Burr goes over the top. This is big boy stuff, Philo. Man, and to get it to drag back like that at the end with that crossing win, that's impressive. 500 foot of power to get to that position. From Burr to Barella, green of six for par. Just a bit floaty for AB, didn't get it to drop. Unfortunately, gonna be picking up bogey. I will send him back to even on the day. Heimberg, this is a putt for double. Solid make there for Calvin. Going to stop the hemorrhaging there at a double bogey at the six. Unfortunately, slide back two strokes, and those are very important strokes out here. Back to three for Williams in his second. That was fluffed, Philo. Just a smidgen. Those two trees there right at the edge of the circle, and I'm sure he punched past that at least okay. 20 feet, so he's probably 12 feet away. All right. Looked worse than it yeah, was. Okay, okay. Visually deceiving. Orem on the tee of six. Little, yeah, a little short on the distance, but happy to be in the middle. Yeah, Barella on seven. Hates oh, it. Oh, 
and no. you can see why. That was a good second kick there. That was. Did it keep him in? I think it did. That was head and OB, and I think that second tree bop there just pushed him back in safe. Wow. Not the longest of holes, only 305 feet no. there at the seventh, and I'm surprised to see him take the left side of that fairway. There's a straight up hyzer punch shot right down the middle. Putter, mid-range, play a little bump and run. And uh, coming up the hill for birdie on three. This is Nicholas range right here. All day long. Little bit of crossing wind. Ooh, everything but in for Nicholas Andela. Just had the line. Robinson. A chance at two. And to go two to through three. Lovely. Similar distance, a little different angle from his brother just a little while ago. That's right. Same result. Again, and Burr next to X. Coming down the hill for Birdie. Just barely enough to get over the rim of the bucket there for Gannon Bird. Drills it. I like that miss. Like, if you're going to miss, that's the place to miss on a putt like this. You want to miss at the bottom of the basket. There you go. Up and in for Bradley Williams. Just a little tap in. Same here for Nicolas Santala. Sad news, Philo. Uh -oh. They updated random lotus hole three to, to not an ace. Oh, oh, what happened? I don't know, man. <laughs> Got us it. all excited, man. I know. That would have been so cool. Oops. Oh, well. There's a shot up the fairway. <laughs> Give him a chance to make a putt. And Barella. Too much want there for maybe. I'll have that left for par. The drive thankfully was not bounce, despite those kicks. Well, I guess the second kick kept him in, right? Yeah. <laughs> not much of a shakeup at the top of the board. It's been pretty consistent all afternoon. Jake Hebetheimer, Joseph Anderson, Mr. Joey Buckets, Linus Carlson making a push through 12. I saw Adam Hammes, uh, five go. through 10, I wanna say. Heimberg on the TF7. Low drift with a mid range. Really? Did I hit the bucket? Yeah, it was. I think that bounced off some sticks. But oh, okay. Slid right past from my perspective. Really nice. Now, light look down at the Harvey Pinnock property. It's a good one. It sure is. I like the changes they made to um, this track from last year. Last year, was, I felt like they were starting in a bad place and ending in a bad place, and where all the spectators were. And now they got everything dialed in really nicely. Everything flows lovely. A great mix of open and wooded holes. Absolutely. Yeah, great test. Going down the hill on four, excuse me, is Robinson. Oh, that finds out of. Oh, it's back in bounds. What a reaction. Have a putt for Birdie. Burr next to throw on hole four. 460 going downhill. Well done by Gannon Burr. 
We'll have that left for birdie. Heimberg for birdie after just skittering past the basket. Got back one of those strokes he uh, gave up on hole six, Violet. That's a nice bounce back there for Calvin. Williams going down the hill on four. Ooh, he needs that to hook up in a hurry. That's a bit wide. Might get that same Matteo finish, not quite as fast. On oh, the bad roll, too. Yeah, you really want to come in on the back side of this green, right where the downslope starts from the flat. That seems to be where you get that nice fast skip that just seems to run out of speed right at the target. Antela. It's a touch feel when you're throwing downgrade 400 into a headwind. You know you got to throw it hard, but you can't overthrow it. You definitely don't want to underthrow it, or you get what happens to Mason Ford. Yep. There's underthrown, but kind of working. Let's see how this rollout works for him. Yeah, circle two, safe putt. And that shot for Ezra Robinson. OB and then rolling back inbounds file, which is crazy, man. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? Yeah. This is Simon Lazat on a hole six, apparently. How did he end up here? Did a Simon thing, probably. Wesley gone for a Simon line, and <laughs> wow, that's. It's like shades of Paul last year. Remember I don't that, think, Is that really hole six? That doesn't look like yeah, hole he, six at he all. He hasn't finished hole six yet, so wow. it should be hole six. He's off the grid. Yeah. Remember when Paul threw that forehand from off the grid last year? Yeah. <laughs> right along the boundary. Yeah. That was oh. hole 17, I believe it was, was back it really? then. Now okay. it's hole eight, I believe, this year. <laughs> Trying to get cheeky with it. Attacking the green, didn't work out. End up way OB. He gave him a mark to here, and then he pulls this off. Just over the top ridiculousness. Yeah, that's, that's things world champion guys do. Yep. And the nonchalant putt to finish it off. Of course. Mason Ford jumping one in. Let's go, yes. Mason Ford. There you go, a little Neapolitan start for Mason. From 70 feet right there. Let's go. He missed the high five for the basket. Did you see it? He's like, psych. <laughs> he left the basket hanging. Hi there, Ian. <laughs> That's funny. Williams, a long look at two. Back on hole four. Hung it out. Yeah. Orem for Brady. Ooh, never online. Hung it out. What's going on out here? We are back to hole four. Here is where Robinson's disc somehow Philo like two or three feet OB rolled right back in still at the edge of the circle yes he is it was an uphill putt should have a tailwind feel to it if any at all seems kind of protected on the screen doesn't it there is a bit of protection from some trees Maybe that's an everything but in type of putt. Yeah. <laughs> Rim, top assembly, chains, uh. and dribbles out. Well, almost turned it into a bonus birdie. Yeah, at least it's a par and not a bogey. Nicholas coming down the hill for two. He's on the board, Philo. On the board, here we go. <laughs> Off the schneid on the board is Nicholas Antela. See if that'll kickstart his round, get a little energy under his wings. You'd love to see it. Gannon Burr. Oh, 
Iceman doing Iceman things on the putting surface, that's for sure. That was perfect. I saw Orem miss the long putt. Here's coming back. Oh, no, no, no. That was right off the bullseye, Ian. Unfortunate. Ooh. That's Williams and Robinson with some pars after the birdies by Burr and Enthla. Jumping ahead to hole seven. And Mason Ford. That's your line, right, Philo? That's what I'm talking about, man. Look <laughs> yeah. how basic that is. There's no chance at all you're going out of bounds with that swing. And look at this dude. Dribbles that thing right up to the basket. Dump up your head there, buddy. Wow. Mason Ford on a bit of a heater, Philo. Hey, man. Also, Andrew Marweed, five down yeah. through nine holes, playing super clean. No bogeys on the card. Love to see that. Can Adam yeah, Hammes say the same? Ty Love, Jeremy Cullen out there doing some work. Adam Hammes continuing to hang it in there. Yeah, clean, All right. clean five. There we go. Uh, we're going to sneak in a quick break while they're making their way to the next. Back in just a few. At Discraft, we've always been committed to delivering the highest quality and consistency in our discs. But behind the scenes, we faced a challenge. What to do with the discs that didn't meet our standards? When we noticed discs with molding imperfections, we set them aside knowing they still have potential. Instead of throwing them out, we had a vision. Introducing ESP Recycled, an initiative that transforms imperfections into something extraordinary. We are thrilled to announce nine molds crafted from 100% recycled material. It was important for me to partner with a retailer that could help with growing my brand and making my products available all over the country and across the world. Flight Factory has helped me accomplish that. Check out all of my gear and thousands of other discs at Flight Factory. Welcome back, Gannon Burr on the T of five. Is he thinking Eagle Philo? I would imagine so. He's just not wanting to turn out there for him today. He's just hanging out. Definitely long enough, but not left enough, yeah. I don't think. Easiest birdie ever if he wants it now, though. It's definitely the easiest birdie out there for these guys with yeah. the big arm. There's nothing to worry about. Nicholas playing this one for birdie. Maybe a little too early to force the issue or to take the risk. I guess so. Not that he doesn't have a... Lovely long game. Yeah. Just, is it really worth it? Apparently not for Nicholas. Just take the layup, take the layup in. Take the birdie and move on. Hole six is a man eater out there. Oh, yeah. We'll go into that hole with a couple strokes under the belt. Robinson. shear there for Bradley. It didn't affect it too much. Safely into the landing zone. Nice clean look in. 
Yeah, maybe a little tree in his back swing. Should be alright. Yeah, should be okay. Over to Mason Ford on hole eight. I like that gap. I think that's the most fair gap you're going to see on this hole. Yeah. Solid shot there for Mason. He's in one of the two fairways out there. They're, they're not easy, though. You want to be in the middle here, for yeah, sure. You yeah. don't want to be off to the sides. That bottlenecking fairway at the eighth is daunting. Second shot for Carlson on 14, who is just one off the lead. Orem on eight. Pretty good as well. Yeah. Kept it central. I like that. Big part of success here at hole eight. Gavin Rathbun playing with Carlson also won off the lead. The pride of Oswego, Illinois. I think that checked up for him. That was looking dangerous for a second. It was, yeah. Rathbun has an, got an eagle on hole 11, Philo. That's amazing. With a 20 Thousand. foot putt. Thousand foot par five playing down the hill with all kinds of danger. You man. guys will see it here in a little while. Rathbun is back, Philo. Ooh, young man can sling him. Yeah, he was playing well in four and two. Remember that? Yep. Williams in his second on hole five. <laughs> Perk, we're out in the wind, or out in the open now. How's the wind here on hole five? What are they dealing with? Yeah, I felt like it was a, a good wind for the eagle attempt there. It was a tailwind over their left shoulder. Bradley and Nicholas both have kind of a tail left to right right now inside 250. But it's much calmer than it was a couple hours ago for the, for the FPO field. I feel like the scores will start to reflect that here soon. Nice, Nate. We'd love to see that. A decent approach by Brad. Little tester left. Yeah, should work for Birdie, but you'd like closer. A live look down at Nicholas and his second from our Flight Factory drone. Just a reminder. Coupon code Austin for 10% off all weekend long. I like this shot and disc selection here for Nicholas Antelago and sidearm. Mid range. Should have zero finish once it hits the ground. He's got his favorite overstable approach disc. And that's what it does most of the time. Lucky. Lovely. Lucky. Smart. Yeah, so lucky. From a fin to a Swede, Carlson. Putting for birdie. Nice line there from Linus, just not enough go. Look at down at the green of five as your feature card makes their way there. Looking at Robinson and his eagle bid from up above. Does well to check up just off the bullseye, maybe a step or two. Safe little half bid. Rathbun for a share of the lead. Gave himself a tailwind putt. Uh, if he makes this, he's definitely back. Oh, he's back. Let's go, Gavin. The Philo stamp has been put on it. My man. Yeah. That's that's fantastic for Gavin, man. He's really battled some injuries the last couple of years, and to see him throwing like this again, putting like this again, is fantastic. It reminds me of that performance from Ledgestone a few years back yeah. when he was really coming on strong. Mm -hmm. Burr for Eagle, technically. It's a layup for Birdie, though. You ever play golf out here, Philo? No. I don't think it's ever been open for golf when we've been when around here. here. Yeah, it's yeah, too much happening. Looks interesting. Looks fun. Yeah, it does. Williams for Birdie. Approach costs him as that birdie putt comes up short. You Bit can't of a death putt there. Yeah, you can't par five, man. <laughs> staring at nothing but yeah. drop off. 
Hard to get aggressive for Bradley Williams from that angle. Robinson has the green light coming up the hill for his birdie. Sounds like talking about the meter in there from the OB line. Something like that. Maybe he was. Uh, yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah. I thought he was well short of that line. Not sure what they were worried about. There's a Burr birdie, followed by an Entela birdie. Perk, what were they talking about right there with uh, that Robinson putt? Yeah, I think they were talking about whether or not he could take a little bit more space in to get a normal stance from that OB line. I think he was right inside a meter from the OB. Gotcha. Thanks, sir. They are headed into the woods, Philo. Hole six coming up, my man. Yeah. Better hang on. Uh-huh. Borum. On hole eight. Sleeking left. You have to get in there pretty deep to find the out of bounds. Yeah. Not ideal for Matt Orm along the left side here. And one of your co-leaders, Gavin Rathbun, now on the TF-15. 345 foot, par three. A little chip shot for these guys with the sidearm. Isn't it? Play it just below the basket and use that edge to climb the hill. Ooh, he pulled that big time. Trying to skip over oh, there. Ooh, caught a tree at the end. Did it, okay. Yep. Lengthy look there for Gavin. Red flag. No. Apparently. Even worse. Yeah. Wow. On hole eight, forward. Can he shoot the gap? No. That is, that's a hallway, Philo. It is. It starts out at about 20 feet, and it bottlenecks down to about 12 feet. His last two trees there before the target. All right. Into the woods go. goes your feature card, Gannon Burr. First up. I think mid-range is the right choice here at six. Don't get quite as aggressive kicks when you throw mid-range. You want to keep something in the fairway central to the left center. He's with you. That's a mid. Whew. Does well to get past that first one. I don't think he's going to have a whole lot to work with from there, Ian. Yeah, it looked pretty. Too far left. Yeah. Is he going overstable approach here, Philo? He is. Really disking down. Interesting. Pushes it up there a little further than... Right. Rather than uh, yeah, Gannon. And it's the same neighborhood, though. Similar, yeah. We'll see what they got to work with. Yeah. I just didn't see much from my walkthrough from out there. Ahead on eight, Ford gets it just outside the bullseye. And Robinson back on six. That has the right idea. That's Beautiful. The best of the Lovely. Still going to have some things to, to navigate on his way towards the basket, but you can have a great drive and still not have much yeah. here at the six. True story. Eight and Orem. Delay up. Williams on six. Ooh. All right. Not bad. Not bad. All right. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know how. I haven't figured them out yet. Yeah. They don't. They just seem kind of weird. But I like 17. Seventeen. Oh, the uh, longer part three. Yeah, like the flex shot. Yeah, actually, yeah, that one's pretty, pretty nice. I don't get like. Why do they have those? Like four or five trees, like just. Oh, the before figures. the green. Yeah. Just to see if you are, are lucky. Yeah, not yeah are lucky. I don't know. Like you can't choose like which gap you want to hit from the tee. It's so far away. Yeah, it's all luck after that. 
Just kind of like this one is, like, yeah. Carlson. Oh, interesting reaction there. Ford on eight. Nice make for par from Mason. Adam Ham has just made eagle on 11. Oh boy. He has a shared lead thanks to that eagle. 31 foot putt too. Those are some throws, Philo. <laughs> you gotta risk it to get that biscuit on that par five too. It's a narrow fairway. <laughs> it's a long carry to get yeah. to that sweet spot. Williams around the corner with his second. Textbook stuff from Brad. That was gonna a set himself up with a look. That was very nicely done. And it, oh, apparently the red flag was producer Mo made that one up. So this is for a birdie for Rathmon. And the solo lead. Got to be licking his chops at that angle. Uphill, a little bit of helping wind. Up and in for your leader, Gavin Rathbun. Two holes to go. Gannon Burr. On hole six with a beaut. Still. Yeah, came rush. up short, but does well. Like I was saying, there's just not much over there, you no. know. Just poking and hoping to get towards the green. There's really only been like, I want to say 15 birdies on this hole today too. So not losing a ton of strokes with a par. On hole nine, Mason Ford. Can this find the inbounds area? Yes, it can. I like that spot over there up and to the left, especially for the righty backhand thrower. Really opens things up. See the green well. Yeah, absolutely. Back to hole six and Antela. He's got a window though, Philo, the bird didn't. How about that? Yeah. This is right up his wheelhouse. Technical little mid-range, keep things pretty much on the straight and narrow, maybe start it just a smidgen left, slide it back to center. Not much to worry about on the right side after he makes this initial gap. Doesn't force it over enough, no. interesting. Yeah, Just missed his angle. Man, I thought he was licking his chops on that. Oh, yeah. I'm Take sure one. he was. I'm sure he was. An easy up and down, though, at least. Opportunity squandered. Yeah. Over to Robinson. It's pretty as nice as that shot was. Look at what he's got left. Great kick. Couple inches to the right, and that's OB. Easily. I think this is kind of one of those uh, bait holes, you know, or they're wanting you to force the issue here and get yep. yourself in trouble. The yeah. conditions you guys are in right yeah, now. You're yeah, it makes you're you lying. feel not as great. Your leader, Gavin Rathbond, on the tee of 16. Take a look at the wind out there, perhaps. Three holes left for Gavin, rather. Yeah. That is 16th already. I think they put the score was a little yeah. messed up there, yeah. Uh, back to Robinson in his third on six. Just okay. smidgen long right off the bullseye. Yeah. On hole nine, Matt Orem. 340 feet to carry the OB to get inbounds. Got about 100 feet of depth to work with to the sweet spot, rather. You can throw it a little bit longer, but not much. Nicholas throwing three. A little more texture than I thought to this shot. Uh, 
a friendly tree kick. He's fine. Yeah, five steps away. That should be no problem for Nicholas. Missed the angle again a little bit, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, ripped that over a little bit too much. Overcompensation from the previous? Potentially. You're just trying to shape some stuff in there and, you know, do it right. Gannon Burr has a look at birdie from circle two. Slash the fairway. effort from Gannon. He usually drives the disc in there a bit more than that. That was a bit floaty out the hand. Yeah. Not really his normal style. Your leader, Rathbun, TS-16. It is the forehand hole if you got it. Sounds like that's in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Williams for birdie. Get some Bradley Williams. Great bird. I wonder if Gannon was kind of worried about that foliage behind the basket, Philo. I don't know. It's so strange sometimes that the, the, the times these guys decide to put, you know, tentative versus aggressive. You'd see like these guys just fire at it at a death putt when they got a little shrub and they <laughs> send it up there all slow and floaty. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, stick with your with your routine, you know, stick with what works. Par does work for Gannon on six. He wanted birdie, but par is not bad. It's not bad at all. Nicholas. Putting for par. Robinson also has a par putt. Ezra, solid round. Three down through six, a clean. Queen three. Pars are good. Go get a birdie on the next hole. Yeah, there you go. Orem. Second shot on nine into this peninsula green. That needs to fade in a hurry, Ian. Maybe a tree assisted fade? I don't think so. That yeah. took too long. It sure did. Miscalculation there for Matt Orem, thinking that crosswind was going to snap him up faster, but he turned it over into the shot. That usually just holds straight. Yep, exactly. That's what you see. Ford. Also throwing two on nine. Misfire in a big way there from Mason Ford. That never crossed in on the far side either. Long birdie look for Rathbun on 16. He's a short and right of the pin. Headwind putt, hard to keep it in the air. Okay. Yeah, we'll take his par and move on. Bradley Williams on the tee of seven. Looks like Brad's lining up the hyzer line. We've seen a bunch of guys play the little baby Annie around that left side of the skinny tree. This is, this is what the doctor orders for this hole, man. Throw it hard and straight, a little bump and run, slide up there, take your little 20-foot putt. Don't have to get cute with this hole. Carlson for birdie for a share of the lead as well. Fellas at seven under now. Gannon Burr going to the flex oh, line, which Philo doesn't like. This is why right here. <laughs> why would you do that? There's just, it opens up the variables. I will say that Gannon, he's a flex thrower. I hear you. You know, that's like his natural swing. I know it's swing. a preference thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, some yeah. guys are more comfortable with this yeah. swing versus that swing. But right. then you got to also think risk versus reward. Yep. You throw the hyzer line, the worst thing, you're going to get a three. He's a flex thrower too. But he takes your line, Philo. A little too much hyzer. Yeah. Didn't stand up. Ooh. That's the worst kick. Didn't punch it enough, you know? Right, right. Just trying to, like, get too cute with it almost, in my opinion. Robinson.
got it. Ugh. It's there for a reason, Philo. Yeah. yeah. It'd be too easy if it wasn't <laughs> exactly, there. Exactly, man. Yeah. All right. Ford now throwing four after the OB second. Ooh, Mason. Had to get a little magic there, skip it in for the par save. That would have been cool. One more yeah. look at this from uh, the catch. Look at that gallery there. Oh. <laughs> it almost tickled him. That would have sat in there for sure if that would have caught some change. Yeah. Nice and soft. We are back with Robinson on hole seven. Hit first available and a nasty kick to the left. That was a crafty little shot. Give himself a chance to save a par. Circle two, look for it, yeah. Nicely done. Orem on hole nine. You saw his shot leak OB, but does save par. Wow. That's a great scramble right there from Matto. Little tailwind put up the hill, capitalizing. Nobody putts like this guy. And few better at it. Back to Burr on seven, his second. You ever give Matty O putt a, a try, Philo? Not once in my life. I don't know how he does that. It's incredible. I can't figure it out. It's very unique, man. That is a one of a kind style. Yep. That's okay for Gambit. I wouldn't call it great. It'll work left. I don't think he would either. I'm sure he'll knock it in there like the rest of them. Yeah. He's, our, he's on Just a He's got to give it the Iceman stare. <laughs> After taking a double, Calvin Heimberg with four in a row to redeem himself. Right back in the mix. Two off the lead. Wow, what a front nine for Calvin, man. He scratched that missed mandatory off, and who knows where he'd be right now. Yeah, he had two big boo-boos, right? That's, missed yeah. the bando, then... Third yeah. shot, whacked a tree, also went out of bounds. Did well to get it up and in for a double. Nice to see him turn it around in a big way. Yeah. That was Nicholas headed into the woods. Perk, how is Antela looking? We saw a nasty kick left. Yeah, it's, it's pretty deep over there on that left side. Uh, I'm still actually not sure if he went far enough to find the OB line. I believe he's going to be safe and should be able to manage this. Wish him the best. Oh, yeah, he is pretty close, isn't he? He got about two-thirds of the way up the fairway before he darted off to the left. There's things to miss, though, on this second shot. Just 56 feet left to the pin. Smokes it a little long, but similar distance to his last putt. Yeah. Shouldn't be too stressful. Robinson. Never liked it. Yeah. And he's got a circle's edge coming back for bogey. Did you hear the new one that came out? <laughs> the Bogurdy. The Bogurdy? <laughs> what is that? I'll explain it in a second. All right. Williams for birdie. To grab a stroke plus on the card. Can't have that. No. It's a couple that have dried up short for Bradley. Just cutting off that swing just one click too early. Robinson now for bogey. Nice band-aid putt. Agreed. Bo Gertie is when you throw a shot that should have been a bogey. Let's say you got a water carrier. Oh. Right? It skips off and lands safe, then you make the putt for the birdie. It's like the opposite of a birdogie. Exactly. The opposite. <laughs> 
shout out to my guy Jeff Panis for that one. Oh, did Panis give you that one? Yeah. All right. That's nice. said whoever says it on air first, they get to claim yeah. it. So I think I win. I, I have Berdogi. I'm pretty sure I claim that one. So you can have Bogerty. Bogerty. <laughs> Sounds like a baseball player's name or something. Bogerty. <laughs> it does. <isn't> it? <laughs> At no. the plate. It's the same man that put us together in the booth for the first time, too. Jeff Panis. True story. Yeah. And the other JP. That's right, yeah. Jonathan Poole. He's the one who put us in live for the first time together. True story. Nicholas for par. As expected, dead center. Nice. Come back for his par. Probably pop that in there. A little disappointment, I'm sure. Yeah. We are flying around the course to 17 and Carlson. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Inbounds. Could have been worse. Yeah. Not what he was looking for. Orem on 10, Island Green. That's why he aimed to the left on this hole. A little bit more breathing room. Checks up right at the edge of the circle for Matty O. Tailwind putt. He should like that. Your solo leader, Gavin Rathbun. That looks a little steep. Will it unravel? Oh, my goodness. Tree kick. That's a good spot. Not bad. Yeah. Short par three, or you know, rather medium length par three for these guys, right around 400 feet at the 17th. Ford, down the hill on 10. Hit the brakes. And it does check up. Green flag there for Mason Ford, joins Matty O. Bradley Williams back on eight. Get off of that. One of the best we've seen so far today. I know we haven't seen many of them yet, but that's really, really nice there from Brad Williams. Again, Emperor. That doesn't hurt him. Not at all. That'll work. Yeah. Anything that filters back towards the center or right side, I think these guys will like. I think it's really tough when you get caught up a little early and left. Not a lot to work with over there. A live look down from our Flight Factory drone at Antilla. Really nice drive as well. Spot on. Yeah, Marby picked up another birdie, by the way. Got one on 12. I saw him before his round started. He was looking happy and ready to rock and roll. Nice. Happy to see him out here playing strong. Oh, Ooh, no, boy. that's almost definitely out of bounds. That's two holes in a row of first tree available for Robinson Philo. It'll happen, though. Yeah, it looked like he was maybe trying to do a little too much, a little fast for what's needed here. It's only 275 to the landing zone. Not the longest of par fours here at the eighth. Mason Ford coming up the hill on 10 for birdie. Definitely a putt you can be aggressive at. Uphill, tailwind, some thick grass to gobble up your putter if you miss. About the worst result possible there, honestly. The skip Picked up off the speed, yeah, yeah. Ramped off. Now he's 25 back in the headwind. Orem just a little bit closer, just about the same putt, though. 
also for birdie. Finds the chains, but not the bottom of the bucket. It'll be a par coming up for Matt. And uh oh, he's on a superheater, Philo. Woo, that's the Yachty and one, huh? My goodness, that's that is that's a, it's a Yachty Plus. Yachty Plus, I like that. Yachty Plus, that's impressive. Calvin Einberg, one Eagles par today. Look at that, and one par. <laughs> One double bogey and the rest under. Oof. Robinson off the fairway. On hole eight, throwing two. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Catches a two-inch wide tree and sends him back into the bush. Backwards. Wow. Rathbun. All right, Gavin. Yeah. We're watching you, buddy. Yeah. He's feeling it. That's a, a really tough guy, that wall. It's a funky shape. Yeah, it is. Got to bleed that left to right. I'm really seeing the S turn, something overstable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of swing that in late from the right. Yeah. I walked with Randon on that hole yesterday, and that's that's what he threw and got circle's edge. Yeah. yeah. There's those late trees that show up right around 60 feet from the basket. It's right. 30 feet towards the tee. But from the fairway, they feel like they're about 60 feet, circle two, where those six trees show up. Yep. Really going to mess anything up coming in there. It's just, as you kind of heard the other guys talk, a little little luck infused at the end of a shot like that. Yeah. Your Paul McBeth check, Philo. He is even through 11. Just in case you were curious. Robinson. His fourth does not find the gap, but stays pretty close to it at least. You'd expect a six from there. Burr throwing two. These are fresh fairways, so. Again, and doing some maintenance. In a year, these things will be just beat in beautifully, right? I would imagine so. If it gets played, mm -hmm. for sure. Do you know if they have disc golf here year round? Yeah, that's a good question, Philo. Seems like we just get to use, utilize this property for the tour. Yeah. Look at this shot. Is that any good? Oh my gosh! Come on. Perk, were you impressed by that shot? Because we sure were. That's high level. That's exactly what the designers were looking for. All three of them, Gannon, Nicholas, and Bradley, all have that slight draw right there. Philo, let's see if they can follow the vapor trail here. My man. Love it, Nate. Man, Bird loving that shot through the hallway. Perhaps a different strategy here for Nicolas Antelo. This is one of his best skills here is that mid-range approach, backhand. I know he's let a couple slip through the fingers here in the last yeah. few holes, but you got to stick with your bread and butter. This is what got you to where you are, man. Going to go mid or overstable approach? Overstable approach. There he is. Now he's back. Yep. Back on track. Really nice. That's what we've come to anticipate out of the hand of young Nicolas Santela. Great pace, great angle control. That will get him to three through eight. And it's a clean three at least. No it's not bad. Yeah. Rathbine on 18. This is a tough one here, Ian. Agreed, sir. 
I don't know if he wants to see. Oh, oh. look at that. Wow. <laughs> He did not want to see that go and left. That no. gave him a brilliant kick. Yeah, he was about to be in the stuff over there on the you left. You don't want to be left. Uh, Williams on eight. Oh, look at these guys. I think they practiced this shot once or twice. Perk, how about those approaches, man? You, you called it, and they just threw them for you beautifully. Yeah, this is playing as one of the hardest holes on the course, and to see them go three for three right there and the furthest away is Nicholas at maybe 20 feet incredible wow Fantastic. chef's kiss yeah you saw it right there from Williams thank you so much Nate Mwah. <laughs> I just spent some time in Spain there's a whole bunch of that going on man. Oh, yeah, I forgot that's about your trip man it was incredible yeah you, lo you love Woo. it over there ah uh, one of my favorite things Barella Birdie, Eagle, Birdie for AB in the mix. Is he a three off the lead now? Yeah, three off the lead. Firmly in the mix. Calvin Heimberg for par. For his second par of the day at that, 312. Up and in for Heimberg. Yeah, Calvin. <laughs> a little Calvin fan, so cute. That was awesome. That'll keep me smiling, right? Robinson. Oh, come on oh. now. Oh, oh Robinson. <laughs> centimeters. Great, then. Uh. Oh, this is what got him there, I imagine. Yeah. In a bit of trouble. Ends up there, and then you just saw the putt. Almost cashed Half it. an inch, man, from yeah. 80 feet. Crazy impressive. Let's move to three, Nicholas. Never a doubt. He doesn't miss many of those 26, 27 footers. It's pretty automatic. Robinson, this would be for bogey, I believe. They're saying for double. For double, oh, that's right. We had those forehand rollers out of the woods. Forget about those. Yeah, the second tree killed him. Uh -huh. The second smack. Yeah. Routine birdies left here for Williams and Burr. On the pole is the putt from Williams. Again, in just a step outside bullseye. They are starting oh to cook, Philo. Calvin Heimberg. Speaking of cooking, this man is on the heater of heaters right now. He's cooking with all kinds of low, <laughs> low smoke oil right now. He's just <laughs> searing and nice. sizzling the steak up in the frying pan right now. Your other co-leader, Gavin Rathbun, he's on 18. We saw the kick out of the woods. Let's see if he can take advantage. Looking good. Oh, one tree to beat. That would have been there. Let's see if he can send it in from it. I thought he did it out of the hand. Still one heck of a round. Either oh, way, yeah. he makes his putt or not. That'll Job be done on day one. A clean eight down. He can finish with a par or better. On nine, Bradley Williams. I like this. I like that a lot. That's one of the flattest spots in the whole fairway right there. And I think that pays dividends on a hole like this where you're throwing uphill. There's a lot of spots out on this fairway that have a bit of an uphill feel to it. You don't want to have that footing on an uphill shot. Remember Mason Ford shot a little bit ago, never got in bounds. He was on that slope down, leaking left. There you go. Yeah. Gannon Burr. A little bit higher, a little bit further to the right. It should be just fine for Gannon. Ooh, he pushes it way up into the landing zone yes. towards the high end. He's going to be close. He's going to have a chip shot Yeah, for Gannon. Mid-range chip shot. Antela. 
little bit of help with the wind blowing from right to left here. Does that get off the green, Philo? Ooh, I hope that was high enough. That should be safe. In oh, the long grass, no. OB. Big mistake, that's so uncharacteristic. Robinson. Robinson not giving that thing any chance to miss that. No. Nice and high. Right there with Bradley Williams on the flat spot. Lovely. Is that the spot you're aiming for off the tee, Philo? I would love to land there if I were playing this hole. Mm -hmm. Nice and flat, great angle into the green. And some, some wiggle room, too, if you miss. A little bit. A little bit. Carlson on 18. Ooh, going for the forehand. This has max distance potential if it's clean. Oh, baby. That's OB. It could check oh. up. That's oh. OB. And you can't go for the green because there's a mandatory up the fairway, 600 feet, so you can't really go after the green out and around. Yep. That's right. Corey Ellis doing a little disc retrieval. Nice to have him back stateside after his adventures in New Zealand. <laughs> that thing is stuck up there. Issues. Hey, there we go. Oh, is he helping a friend? Oh, he was being... He was helping a friend. That's great. Entla from the drop zone throwing three now. He'll throw four from there and try to scramble up a five. Bogey. Had kept it clean today, but that will end on hole nine for Nicholas. Carlson, OB off the tee on 18. Playing some army golf. Venus Carlson on the last. It's a tough finishing 18. It absolutely is. That hole has got some teeth. Uh, Perper looking down at Robinson right now, but apparently it was a time violation. Fill us in there. Yeah, Nicholas Antilo was given a official warning from the marshal here on the card. and. While he got the birdie back on the eighth, it looked like he was a little bit flustered on the tee of nine and, and kind of rushed that tee shot. We'll see how it plays out for him. At, at what point did he get the warning, Nate? Was it before his tee shot on nine? Yeah, he was given the warning immediately after he threw his approach on hole eight. Gotcha. Thank you. Down at Bradley Williams, his second on hole nine. He's gonna want this to get down in a hurry. I don't know, man. Oh boy. Oh, good news, bad news. It looks like he almost got pin high, so maybe a circle's edge putt for Bradley Williams. Yeah, that's kind of what I was feeling, too. Perk, any idea how close they're going to mark that for, for Williams? It looks like he crossed in bounds pretty close to the pin. Yeah, it looks like just outside of circle one, putting into a right-to-left win for the par. Okay. Thank you, Nate. Carlson on 18, throwing at least three, maybe four. That looks a lot better. Yeah, it does. We believe that to be four. He'll have that left for five. Back to nine and Burr. That's got a hustle. Doesn't oh, no. find the sidewalk. Oh, man. I'm really surprised he went for that. It's a crossing wind. It's holding that disc out there, it's right? It's going to hang it out there. It's not going to let you fight back unless you go one angle. If you turn it over, man, it is cooked. It's not a helping wind, and you're throwing uphill, so you're losing speed and energy. Oof. Nicholas throwing four. Does that have enough go? Just oh, enough. All right. Has that for five. 
Nice little band-aid approach for Enthra. Rathmon on the green of 18 and for the solo lead with a birdie. Let's go, Gav. This is a big putt. Does it get more fun than this? Gavin Rathbun, nine under par, first round, super clean. Even at a slow start. Ooh-wee, this is going to get interesting here, Ian. I cannot wait to see what happens towards the end of this round and see who he's paired up with tomorrow. Right? Roll back this Zuka replay. Bang! <sighs> good right. catch, too. Heart. Yeah, a little <laughs> tiny bit left, yeah. maybe, but those chains really do do a good job yeah, of catching Yeah, they do. They do. We've seen that this morning as well. Burr throwing four, the stroke and distance penalty. Man, I'm so surprised he went for that with the sidearm with that angle and the distance. I was thinking stable mid-range, overstable putter, just throw it right at the basket and it has nowhere else to go. Yeah, the drive was so good. Perfect, man. Yeah. Can't drop a disc in a better spot. On 13, Heimberg. Last One year's... tree to beat. This is a par five tee shot last year. It's a par three tee shot now, and that's it. That's curling up inside circle one for Heimberg. Looks like he's gonna add another one to the tally. Get back on the birdie, birdie train. Carlson for bogey on 18. Solid round all in all for Linus. I know it's disappointing to finish the day with a bogey after you fended him off all afternoon. There's someone else at nine, Philo. There he is. The cookie, the cookie monster. Man. Here we go. I hope he brought a bunch of cookies today. He's probably had to take a bunch of bites. No doubt. That score. A whole bunch of green if you're looking at the PDGA live scoring. Williams on nine. That's a nice up and in for Brad. It is. Good scramble there. It's an errant sh shot up the hill. Had a way to maintain composure. Robinson, a really nice birdie. Excellent birdie. Strokes on folks. And that also gets him back under par on the day. Entela for bogey. No way, Philo. What's happening right now? Somebody got the voodoo doll out on this cat? I mean, they, they did. There's a time the thing kind of like uh, rattle them a little bit now. And Oof. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, we got we got to reset the clock. I need a break. Final. We do. We're gonna sneak in a break on the network. We'll be back to the action before you know it. This is the game changer. Step onto the course with the pure premium disc golf bag, adding a touch of glamorous flair to your play. Don't miss the exclusive presale of PureDisc.net for the best price. Upgrade your game. Upgrade your look. Promo code the open 15 at checkout and get 15% off your next order this weekend only at powergripusa.com. Plus, orders over $40 shipped free. Some of my favorite discs in my bag are the A-Series discs. They're the ones I lean on to get close to the basket. These are torque resistant discs, provide a consistent fade at the end of the flight. The best way to find your flight is to get out and use these discs yourself. Andrew 
Marweed on the TF-16. It's a forehand hole, and Andrew Marweed has a fantastic forehand into the bullseye. For the solo lead, a drop-in birdie coming up. Back on 10, Robinson. Long and OB, Robinson headed to the drop zone. Barella for par. Hole 13 came up short left, OB. Yeah, that's a, that's a bogey on a birdie hole when you're AB. Back to 10, Williams. It's leaking left. OB is Williams as well, both headed to the drop zone. Heimberg for a share of the lead and nine down. Cousin Vinny putting in work. <laughs> it's a great movie. One of my all time favorites, man. Isn't it, man? It's a uh, classic just, movie. It's an absolute classic. If you're Ganon. old like us, you'll appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and Tomei. Gannon Burr. Got to hit the brakes. There you go. Gannon showing some touch. Mm -hmm. Easy for this shot to get away from you here, ladies and gentlemen. We just saw it happen twice with that backhand. Just so easy. And uh, can he unrattle himself? I like this angle. Get in. Yes. Nicholas Atzalo one hops into the basket. That's the way to bounce back. That was awesome. Bounce back, bounce it in. Woo! And hardly a smile. <laughs> <laughs> after after hole nine, you know. Yeah, oh. something got under his skin out there. You usually don't see guys so grumpy after an awesome ace like that. We've been calling aces all day. This is a real one, Philo. That was <laughs> legit, man. Mark it one, dude. Let's go. All right, OTB shot of the day. Nicolas Santela. <laughs> Got that on lock. Mm -mm -mm. It's okay to smile, man. Shake it off, bud. Drops the bag halfway up the fairway. Going to run down there and scoop it up. t pads back up the hill. That's true. For the next hit. Get out the way. Uh -huh. Awesome stuff, man. Robinson from the drop zone for par. Man, solid. Sometimes when they're framed up for you like that, it just makes it a little easier, huh? It definitely can help. Getting Burr for birdie. A little bit of head and crossing wind here. No issue for Gannon Burr. Slides that in on the right side. Williams disc down there. He missed his par putt. Has a left with bogey as we watch Heimberg on the tee of 14. Uh, if it beat that tree, I think he's in business. Man. For a shot that it's only 285 to the sweet spot, these guys are throwing hard. True, huh? You don't need a whole lot to get to the sweet spot there. Isaac Robinson. He's fought his way to one down. Opted for the straight up hyzer gap, caught something up there in the canopy and smacks him down in the middle. He's right next to Calvin Hybrid. I believe so. Yeah. Looking back at Paul Macbeth. And not instead, anymore. Not anymore. Entela on the tee of 11, coming off the ace on 10. This should have plenty of space to check up. Should drag over a bit, but tons of land. There you go, nicely done. Smart conservative drive there from Nicolas Entela. Get himself back into that right headspace. Get him burr. That tree off to the right is in the perfect place. Whoever designed this hole is really paying attention to what they had to work with. Yep. Gannon swinging a little hyzer out there. That's a 
chip shot all day that almost goes 500 feet. <laughs> 560 to that bunker from the tee pad. Is it okay? Wow. Didn't look like he hardly did a thing, did it? No, it really didn't. It's a it little is, downhill, but it is a little downhill, but it's not drastically no, downhill. No, it's not. Yeah. Robinson. I like that. I ride that OB line. Tons of land to work with. Williams. Nice smooth swing there for Bradley Williams. Should catch that Heiser finish. Safely into the center. Marweed has this bullseye drop in for the solo lead. What a drive. Man is golfing his plastic today. Yes, he is. That was the wrong guy. <laughs> Flashed up Linus Carlson. Oh, did they? Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at Andrew Marweed on our screen. <laughs> and there he is, first double digits through 16. Sit on a turkey right now and has birdied four of the last five. Yeah, a couple of challenging holes to get it into the clubhouse here for Andrew Marweed. Going to have to finish this up clean to... Hang on. Still got Calvin Heinberg out there doing big things. Look at your European Open champion. Corey Ellis yeah. doing big things. Yeah. 8 through 14. That's solid. That's really good. 17 with Marweed. Got to start drifting. All right. It'll be safe. A little short, a little left. Heimberg. You want a whole 14, Philo? And it's out, but it's not close. Oh, there's a disc on the green right there. Not sure who that is. That was uh, Paul Macbeth. Barella. There you go, A.B. There's a shot. All right, back to the par 5-11th, and Antela throwing his second. Good spot to come in is just to the left of that little bunker out there. Nicholas, there you go, drive it right at it, anticipate the disc to move left and away. Solid, solid play. Opens up the green nicely from there. bit of an optical illusion from the fairway to the target in certain areas on this hole. It seems like the basket's right there. It's actually an elevated target about 100 feet further away than what it looks like when you're standing in the fairway. It looks like, oh, it's just over the back of this mogul by the ball golf green. But no, it's a bit further than that. You're going to have to put a move on it to get all the way back there. Oh, yeah. Bradley throwing two. Sending it. Get out of bounds, unfortunately. Easy up and down par, at least. Right? Is it something you got to do when you're, yeah. you know, yeah. like take your birdie, man? Robinson throwing two. Now the wind is blowing left to right for these guys. See, hanging out there over that line, you shouldn't be expecting it to fade back much at all. Robinson keeping it between the lines. Will it check up? It does. Oh. Oh, I, my bad. I saw that backwards. He needed to be more left. Out of bounds. Well, I guess that makes my point even more accurate. Yeah. You throw it out there on the right side, it's not going to fade back left. Heimberg with a long look at birdie on 14. Got nothing to do with that. No. Nope. This is somewhere around Bullseye. And back to 11 for Bird. Does he think Eagle? Yeah, you know he's going to go. He kind of looks like he's looking that direction. Hopefully he paid attention to what he just saw. 
and keeps that thing moving left. Out the gate's better. Don't be too far left. It is fast over there. Yep, there it is. Another OB stroke. That was a fantastic perspective on that shot from our Flight Factory drone. A reminder, coupon code Austin. Head over on the, the website, flightfactorydisc.com. You can uh, celebrate Calvin Heiberg's amazing round by buying some Calvin Heiberg merch. Get 10% off with Austin. Speaking of Calvin Heiberg, playing for par. Not Dribbles that one in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Not the prettiest of putts, but we'll take a par. Effective. Third par of the day for Calvin. I think so. Not too bad through 14 holes. Barella, this is a birdie putt. And AB, he's now at five down. Solid. Firmly in the mix. Some red out there. <laughs> All the shades. There's Macbeth. And Marweed, long look at birdie. <laughs> if that thing goes in. <laughs> he flashed chance on the way by, though, didn't it he? It did. That thing was had the right shape, yeah. had the right intentions. Didn't draw any metal. All right, I saw Vino Mekala up there. I ran into him yesterday as well, walking the course. Great guy. Robinson, after throwing OB with his second. will get a par from there. Williams, also throwing four after an OB second. Can hopefully straddle his way to a par there. And Antela, the really only one who could still birdie at this point, has played the hole clean. I like that. Oh, hung it out there a little bit. I thought out, out the hand, that looked nice. Yeah. It's kind of the play that I had in mind, right out there, hanging out under that tree limb and drop it in. Just a little too much pace for Nicolas Antela. Yeah. Uncharacteristic day for him, huh? Uncharacteristic day for him as well. Oh, boy. This trend. Man. Not been the best start for Mr. Pablo this year, has it? No. He's dadding Philo. For sure, man. I'm sure that's it's got to be It's tough to practice priority. putting when you got a cute baby to hang out with, you know? I'm sure that's where I'd be at, too, man. Yeah. Kicking it. Nothing like hanging out with your, with your baby. I wouldn't know, but I imagine. <laughs> yeah. A.B.? On Spot on. That was ridiculous. I haven't seen that throw yet, this this event. Burr for birdie after the OB second. Gosh, that was close. A par from there. It's disappointing. disappointing. Yeah, it's got to be, man. This yeah. is the easiest birdie on the course. Well, yeah. it's second easiest birdie, in my opinion. Right. Heimberg on 15. Will this bend? That's fine. Pretty nicely. That's fine. Yeah, it is. Antela for birdie. Back on 11. Bang! Nicolas Antela turning it on here. After the uncharacteristic mistake at the ninth, acing the tenth, now covering up that errant approach with a really nice putt from circle two. That's a par putt for Williams, finding the bottom. Same should be said for Robinson and then Burr. Philo, did you feel like Nichols is playing slow? Did, I know we're in the booth, so it's hard to like gauge that. He is a more deliberate player. I'll say that. And, you know, it's you hard to. I was victim of that too, man, for a long time. It's right. hard to be a fast player and to just always have your mind made up and just always ready to go at like 10, 15 second pace. When you're in the woods like this too, I don't know, man. Yeah. We're in the booth. We weren't there on the right. on the card to see it. To be fair, like the card is two to three holes behind at this point, right? Some, um, something's happening. Yeah, so I wonder if maybe just the whole card kind of playing slow and potentially. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, hard to say. Yeah, Macbeth. There we go. Back in. That's a birdie. 
Nate, can I put you on the spot? You were on the ground with the card. Do you have any kind of take on the, their pace of play? What, what Did Nicholas kind of stand out to you at all? or I don't know. What are your thoughts? Hey, he's always been a guy that takes his time. It, it doesn't necessarily stand out, but the marshal on the card said that he had timed him once over 30, timed him twice at like 50 seconds, gave him a break, and then on the third time, he gave him that official warning. So things are kind of changing out here. You know, people are getting those two-stroke penalties for being 30 seconds late. You know, marshals are out here kind of making sure the pace is play is good. So it's it's a little different than it than it was when this tour started. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's upping the professionalism, is it not, Nate? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's it's good for the marshal to be out there and for the players not to have their clocks out, you know, yeah. time in their competitors and having to, to dish out those penalties themselves. Yeah, I'm 100% with you there, Nate. Nicholas Tantala continuing to march along. That's definitely inside circle one. I agree with Nate. I think it's a whole lot better to have marshals out there making these judgment calls versus something the players need to be focusing on and giving their attention to. Shouldn't be for them to have to make that kind of a call. Burr goes to the mild flex. There you go. There you go. Haven't seen many up there, have we? Not many. Flirting with that OB, but it pays off. In yeah, the, the wind is helping. <laughs> oh, huh. It is. <laughs> That's funny. Blowing from right to left here. Robinson. Very similar to what we just saw from Gannon Burr. Creeps just inside the circle. Step or two behind Gannon. And Williams. Hard to say, Ian. I didn't yeah. catch where exactly that came in. Looked like it was trailing a little left to me. Yeah. My eye, too. Marweed on 18. Get a forward skip without going left too much. I didn't say go anywhere, did you? Yeah, a little underthrown, undercommitted potentially yeah. there for Marweed. I know you don't want to get in danger there. Kyle Klein. I haven't seen him all day. Nah. Just doing Kyle Klein things. Another circle two banger. He's such a C2 monster, man. Fearless, too. That he is. Speaking facts. Ellis for birdie. Yeah. Corey Ellis up there in circle two putting in work. One off the lead of Marweed and Heimberg. These young major winners, man. They are charging right now. They're really coming to form. Really showing they can do this on a weekly basis. That's a look down at 12. Thank you, sir. Yep. 11 and 12. Is it Williams first to putt? I would imagine yeah, so. Yeah, it looks like it down there on the road. See that flag should give you an idea of what's going on here for Bradley Williams. Helping win for the Heiser putt. Never got it up to the chains. He'll settle for par. Swinging over to Robinson next with a birdie look. Crossing wind putt. Tailing crossing, yep. Those chains really do like to grab them. On that weak side, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, you better thank that basket, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> How is that looking terrible? <laughs> Keeping it real. 
Cannon Burr for birdie. So we get Gannon to five under on the day. Right side splash out. say do you think that maybe it was a little instant karma there Ian <laughs> potentially I don't know Antela for birdie can he get the five down on the day he's back sure enough four down over the last three is the fin Oh, I texted you a good finish word yesterday, Philo. Remember what it was? Yeah, I do. Ma Ma awesome. Mataba? Yeah, awesome. Mataba? Something like that, yeah. I should have said that when he aced. I know, right? I blew it. That would have been a, a, a solid pull right there. I blew it. AB. Great forehand hole for his amazing forehand. Pull 16. This looks wide, Philo. To avoid these pot bunkers. Oh, it's spot on perfect for A, B. Almost inside circle one. Yeah. Pretty solid on this shot, man. It's, oh, yeah. That's a tough one. Marweed on 18. Is this his second? The drive got to the middle fairway, huh? Looks like it. Yep. Yeah. A ways back there. This is fired. Ah, gets past those guardians. He's going to have a look at it. Yeah, I just I don't know how good it is, but he's got to look. See if the Cookie Monster can convert. Yeah. Calvin Heinberg, TF16. The backhand play on this one is tough. It really is touchy. Totally blind, throwing into a headwind, and yeah, just not the right angle combination there for Calvin. Retreating backwards. He's got the elbow problems right now, so he's shying away from the forehands. I, I got to hey, think that. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever, you know, he's got to do what he's got to do. Yep. Just miss fire there. Are we with a look in circle two? What a forehand. Yeah, he's one of the best in the whole world at this range, so yeah. you guys better watch out. Has led multiple seasons in circle one putting and a monster in circle two as well. This for an outright lead, isn't it? It sure is, sir. And 11 down. I figured that'd be the number today. Yeah, you, you said know, like we 10, saw those 11, sevens yeah. and eights. I was like, you know, I think these guys can get it to 10, 11. And here we are, Andrew Marweed, all lined up and ready to go. Can he send it home? Negator, air missile off the right side. <laughs> <laughs> the old air nugget. Air nugget. All right, let's jump back to your future card and Entela on the TF13. Will that swing enough? No, that's pretty bad, Philo. Not the greatest, but he's also a guy who likes to send him home from circle two. Yep. Let's see if he can keep himself under control and poised here and knocking another good one. Back to 16 Heimberg. Gosh. Scared that one, but we'll have that left for par. And Robinson on 13. That looks like a shot. I like the height. Yeah. Shoots it a little long, though, out there in circle two for Robinson. Macbeth for birdie on 16. Trying to get it back to level par, and he does for the afternoon. Macbeth trying to scrape together a little bit of a, what would you call that, man? I don't even know. Yeah, not <laughs> his best. Not his best. Burr on 13. Checked up kind of quick for him. Get down the hill, but not so much. Barella for birdie. AB sees himself to another birdie and three in a row. Good stuff there from AB. Marwe to get off the course with a share of the lead and a par on 18. Count it. What a round. Clean 10. Beautiful stuff here from Andrew Marweed. Nice little mix there, you know, nice little heat, cool down, got the heat going again, holding things together nice and strong. 
but he's got your last season's player of the year. A couple holes from the clubhouse trying to run him down. Calvin Heimberg. Is he still the final boss, Philo? Yeah, <laughs> I guess until he gets like beat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah he has to be. He's that guy right now. Yep. He's playing a fantastic round this afternoon. We'll see if he can keep it together. Got the gauntlet coming up, 17-18. Really impressed with the top four here. Getting nine down today, or better. Yeah, those guys are cooking out there. Mm -hmm. Calvin doing it with a double on the scorecard, too. Yeah, where would Calvin Heimberg be without that double bogey? Oh, he'd be feeling great. He's sitting on a, a dozen. Maybe that was something that little spark he needed that, you know? That's how that works sometimes, right? Sometimes. Corey Ellis for a share of the lead. And what a did he big just do? Cut on 16. Uh oh. 17, oh, 17 excuse there me. We thank go. you, thank you. Wow. Yeah, 17's not been coughing up a lot of birdies. That's mm -hmm. a tough get. Yeah, it is. They are making their way to the next, and while they do that, we're sneaking in a break on the network. Back in just a few. Rating is one of the most valuable things you get with a membership. This gives you accurate numbers to track how well you've been doing and your overall improvement in the game. You also get a member number when you register with the PDJ. Your PDJ number is a stamp for when you got involved in the sport. It's a badge of pride for players and a part of your disc golf identity. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com slash join. Cool. Barella, TF17. That's got the right shape out the hand. Let's see if it's got the height and push. Oh, it's got a little bit of push out of it. Still out there in circle two. Just ran out of air. It's the shot I had in my mind. Something looked like that with a little bit more air under it. Long look for Williams, not to be. That was back on 13. Heimberg, 17. Big shot here for Calvin. Yanked over on it. Will it get stable? Oh, no, it's just gonna continue to drag along the right side out there in circle two as well. Should have an open look. Someone had a nice drive. On to left for birdie. Circle two. It was a nice little run. It was. On 18, Corey Ellis. Oh my. He did oh it, Oh my. Oh wow. Annihilating the fairway at the 18th European Open champion, Just Corey Ellis. Showing you how to hyzer and ride. That was gorgeous. Ooh. Robinson coming back for birdie after the long drive on 13. <sighs> Jeez. 
Harper also in circle two, looking at birdie. I think that uh, warning on Nicolas Santola sends a little message to Gannon here to keep the pace up. Let's see how this turns out here for Gannon Burr. A kiss of the chains on the right side. That's two misses on the right. True, but definitely a faster pace for Gannon Burr. True. That didn't take nearly as long as what we saw to start the day. Heimberg a long bit at two. We'll turn into three. Should turn into three. Yeah. Coming back, Burr hoping this turns into three. Solid. Robinson also for par. Par frame at the 13th. That is really disappointing, man. Yeah, you would think this would be one of those kind of routine little hyzer it's shots out there. Basic hyzer, is it not? <laughs> Seems like it. There's a little bit of crosswind, so it's going to hold up your shot just a little bit, but I think you'd be able to anticipate that by going a little more overstable. Barella for birdie. Fades out early. That left for par. Robinson for birdie. Oh, Isaac Robinson. Hello. He woke up. Took a minute, though. He certainly did. Did not start the day the way you'd like to. A bunch of pars, bogey, a double bogey since then. A whole bunch of birdies. On 14, Nicholas. Solid. Robinson. Nice job. Aggressive line. Height. Oh, I checked up nice too, right in the gap. Hard putt for AB. Putt's looking good. It is looking really nice. Burr on 14. What the? Wow, haven't seen this yet today. Up and over from Gannon Burr. See if this stays on the grid. Tracking left, there is OB over there. Uh-oh. He's busting out a flag, that's OB, is it not? Maybe forcing the issue there a little bit. It is OB. Perk, we just saw Gannon Burr go over the top and then OB, talk about that shot there. Yeah, I was just discussing that with uh, Evan Spur of the DGPT. There's really nothing you can do to keep these players from trying to break apart the hole. If you ask me, that line isn't really there because of how much you have to get the nose up. You, you just can't push far enough straight to get out the gap, and Gannon's definitely going to pay the price here. Yeah, it really is. Off the line and OB. And the left, yeah, yeah. that's just, woo. Punishing spot to be in. Right. Best he can do is bogey. If he makes par from there, that's incredible. Look at this drive from Ellis. I don't think we're going to see one much better than this all weekend, Ian. I mean, he no. absolutely annihilated that drive. There's not many people to throw farther, and especially on that line that Corey Ellis threw, that Heiser flip. Heiser flip he's up so straight. Good at it. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's see if he can manufacture a nice clean one here with just a little over 200. 250 into the green. And up and down, and he has the solo lead. That looks a little left. Got to fight through the trees. It did not. Opportunity slips through the fingers there for Corey Ellis to yeah. break away. Back to 14, and Williams his second. Nice touch there from Bradley Williams. Looks like that finished up inside circle one. A couple of steps away from that bullseye hash you see there. Burr grabbing his mark after the OB drive will throw three. 
Is he going to go over the top again? I don't know. Is it I mean, there? I don't think so, man. It looks like there's a couple of trees right on the way out. He's probably going to try for a really fast skip and try to get something on the ground yeah. before that upslope to the ball golf green. It's a skinny line. Let's see how aggressive he is. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to look up again. It's going to be an awkward shot either way. Yeah. Can't imagine he practiced this either, you know? Right. Yeah. Just making it up as he goes here. See how the execution is. OB. Maybe not. He's short, enough. In the He's short enough. Yeah. I thought he had tracked off to the left. There is OB left on this basket. It was headed that way. Uh, Perk. Gannon's inbounds, right? It looked like he was kind of testing that line over there, but I think it's pretty deep in the woods. Yeah, that's another weird shot selection right there. I mean, the wind is ripping right to left out there. As soon as it got above the tree line, it just turned into a kite. He's safe, but he's in a bad spot. Thank you, Nate. Entela throwing two. How's this looking, Ian? It is looking pretty, my man. With that overstable approach, he's got that disc on lock. Right back on the birdie train for Nicolas Antela. He's sitting at five right now. That should get him to six in the mix. What a turnaround after that, uh, that six. Hole nine, huh? Yeah, really. He was one down after hole nine. Not many people recover like Nicolas Santala. Yeah. Ellis for birdie and the solo lead. Oh, the limb. Ah, dang it. Did it take a branch right there? Uh, I, I didn't see it, but it seemed like the wind just snatched him off the line. Okay. Robinson on 14 after a great drive. Beautiful approach. Look at those two approaches. That drive was special. Set that up. Yeah, it was. It was a bonus drive for sure. 18 with AB. Looking for the Coriolis line. Oh. Does it hold straight? Oh. Look at this. That's even better. As well, you might like the Corey Ellis angle better, but he's probably going to go sidearm in there. He should have a nice little look. Mm -hmm. Plenty look, of distance. Did Plenty he disc down there? That looked like a slower disc than Ellis threw. Hard to say. It like really it, didn't move off that line at all. didn't move much at Zero all. Zero fade. Heinberg. Also, putting a charge on this disc, drifting. That could go out of bounds. That's got to be OB, right? It's got to be. Out of bounds after one throw is the word from our score. Uh, Ellis for his share of the lead and a par on 18. Job done for Corey. What a day. Absolutely. Fantastic opening round for Corey Ellis. Nice to have him back on tour. A little Greg Barsby sighting for you. Greg, wake up. <laughs> I'm sure that putt went in. Burr for par. Come on now. <laughs> Gosh, almost rode it in. Almost. Good effort there. That will be a bogey for Burr. A birdie look for Williams. Beautiful make in that crosswind there from Bradley Williams. Up the hill, you air missed this one, man. You could be out of bounds. Took some courage to run that putt. That's gonna send Gannon. Yeah, he's now at three down, Philo. Hard Seven to do a back to back lead. when you're doing that, man. Yeah, it's going to really put the pressure on rounds two and three, and possibly in some uh, inclement weather as well. It's not looking good. No. It wasn't looking good earlier today. There's, you yeah. know, talk of potentially this round not even happening yeah. five hours ago. That's right. They are on their way to 15 while they do. I'm sneaking in a break on the network. Back in just a few.
You Play Disc Golf is your passport to teaching and learning the game. Our mission? To teach disc golf and make it accessible to everyone worldwide. From Alaska to Africa, Guatemala to Canada, and beyond, You Play Disc Golf has spread its wings teaching the love of the game across the globe. Get involved in our movement to make disc golf a universal joy. Explore youplaydiscgolf.org and join us in helping people find flight. To reinvent means looking to the future, seeing greatness for a new generation. With the passion to perform and the talent to win, the time is now. The future is here. You've seen them in the hands of professionals, helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female-owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. Use promo code THEOPEN15 at checkout and get 15% off your next order this weekend only at powergripusa.com. Plus orders over $40 shipped free. Welcome back to the action with Nicolas Antela on the tee of the 15th. That's pretty good, Philo. Putting in work this afternoon. What a bounce back after that dub at the 9th. It's solid, consistent. Right One back to down, there, three man. nine. He's about to be seven with a couple to go. <laughs> Nutty. That's what happens when you don't quit on yourself, man. Yeah. Robinson. This is looking great. Look at that. On the bullseye hash, on the high side. Technical, technical shot from Robinson. Barella on 18, you saw the drive. Goes to the flex backhand for his second. Oh, just a slow drift even. All right, all right. In between circles there. Yeah. Possibilities on the board for young Barella. From Nick Varen, he's at eight, two off the lead. Not bad at all. Back to Burr on 15. That looks a little sod. Yeah. A lot sod from that angle. Yeah. Early and right. Really. Fairway even? Potentially. That didn't. It's only 345. I hope that's not in the fairway. That'd be a really bad shot. Heimberg? It was OB off the tee. It's got to be his fourth, probably. Fourth shot yeah, now. it's got to be. Trying he's to scramble up a bogey. Yeah, he's putting for bogey circle two right now. Williams. Dangerous, dangerous putt from Williams, and it catches an edge and rolls out 38 feet back up the hill. Burr. That right, is circle two. Putter has been failing Gannon lately. That's two or three chain tickles that have just not done the job. Yeah. Crappy Williams putt there for you. 
snake one. Burr for par as well. That tried to jump out, didn't it? it was the last chain. High in the pro side, but a good catch. Antla to get within three of the lead. He is on perfect pace on the back nine, Philo. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm not surprised, but yeah. man, what a performance from Nicholas today after yeah. that hole, that you know, the warning, the and then warning. the bad hole, yeah. and just all the things that were swirling around his name for about five or ten minutes, and all of a sudden he turned yeah. that dark cloud into a big ray of sunshine. And there's a little smile out of Nicholas. Hadn't seen one of those in about an hour. Yeah, he, he, was, he was getting focused in, wasn't he? Yeah, you got to do that. Still want to try to keep a little bit of a light air about you out there, but at the same time, I understand the focus and the and the drive to get your stuff together. Yeah. Six down through the first six holes in the back. Heimberg on 18. Unfortunately, ending the day with a dub for Calvin, huh? After all those good holes, yeah. gets 18 and. Snags a couple away. Barella. Putting for birdie and move within two of the lead. Step through away on the pole for Barella. Man, that putter's looking real good this year. Mm -hmm. I think he really needed that stroke too. I don't think you want to get too much further back than yeah. two or three. Yeah. That's a three-stroke swing between he and Heinberg as Big well. Big time, yeah. Momentum push yeah. right there. Beautiful stroke. And you'll find Barella, maybe lead card, maybe chase card. Chase card at worst. Chase card at worst. Yeah. And has not finished outside the top five this season. He's actually top four. We're kicking off the year, baby. Hey, hey man, baby. it's one heck of a way to start the season. That's for sure. Yep. It's Barella. You know? See if he can keep that mow rolling throughout the whole season. Lots of golf ahead, lots of challenges coming up. It's going to be a long year. It's going to be a fun year, though. I'm I'm so excited about what we've been seeing so far. The All level keeps going talent. up. Yeah, man. the young talent really coming to the... Every year, finally, we watch better and better shots. True. <laughs> you got to love it, man. True. Preach. 16, Entela. Will putt, worst case. In between circles. Robinson next. Doesn't have enough to hold on. What a close. Backhand. Ooh, that was close to being perfect. Maybe another foot of air under that thing and it would have got right up on the basket. Still inside circle one. Excellent shot. Williams. Brad will like that. Circle's edge look. And now Burr. Kind of needs to catch all of these on the way home. Yeah, that's tough to do. <laughs> yeah. Not the kind of course you're looking to make up strokes on the back end of this. <laughs> With birdies, anyway. Maybe other people coming back to you, but potential for a hazard? No, just shy. Yeah, just a little too wide for her, a little too much want. Checking out your tour standings right now. Talking about the young up and comers at the top and old guy there is I guess Luke. Yeah, Luke yeah. would definitely be the oldest of the group. Yeah, like thirty seven or something. Yeah, Ricky and Luke probably have about the same years of experience on <laughs> yeah, tour somewhere true. in there. It feels like they showed up around the same time. But A B has been around for a minute too. Yeah, he has. All young fellows though. They really separated earlier. I'm gonna jump over to Orem, speaking of a guy who's been on tour for quite a while. Seasoned vet right here. Yep. He's seen it all. 
has birdied five of his last six, and now seven down. That's not going to come back, though. Oh. No, it did, just not the way he anticipated it. <laughs> I guess so. Not what he planned on, but. A little tree assisted fade. Yeah, pushed him back towards the bucket, gives him a look for a birdie. Oh, yeah. Burr. Up and in. Massive mud. Out there between circles, 50 footer. He said he needed to catch them all. He caught the first one. Yeah, he did. Let's see what he can do at 17 and 18. Not too many guys getting through that pair of holes clean. Cannon Burr, no doubt about oh, that one. Drops it home. Beautiful. It'd be like that some days, huh? <laughs> Those are the best days when they go home, man. Nicholas for birdie. Ooh, come on now. He can't believe it. That looked money. I was in the bucket for a second. Let's take a look at this from the other angle. A little bit left there, Ian. Just yep. a smidgen. Uh, the smallest of margins. Robinson. Nice. A rare backhand birdie on 16. Robinson. He's making a show of this. Williams for two. Oh, no, Bradley. Going a little disconnected there, perhaps. Yeah, just hung on a bit too long. After an eventful day, we have both Robinson brothers tied at four down. How about that? Yeah. Ezra's got two holes left to pile on. There's a Williams par. And a Nicholas par as well. Seventeen goes your feature card. Can I give a shout out? Do it. <laughs> we got time. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to my boy Brian Schweberger. Did he get the dub? Four hundred career victories for the guy. It happened today, right? Yeah, I believe so. He got the win. He got it. Yes, that's awesome. Good man. on you, Schwebby. Congratulations, my friend. Long time buddy. Yeah, man. We was running into him at USDGC. Such an inspiration, that yeah. guy. Talk about longevity in the game, you yeah. know? Mason Ford. Give that a spin. That is a long birdie look for Orem. Off the band. Almost got to eight down on the day. Take another peek real quick at this run from Matteo. Coming in. Off oh. the band. Just doesn't drop quick enough. Solid effort there from Matt O. It was. Let's check out Philo's Keys for Closing. Brought to you by our friends at BlackingDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Yeah, man. Well, we just walked off the 16th with our feature card. You got to avoid those pot bunkers. That's really the only danger out there. 17 and 18, clean off the tee is really the recipe. If you walk away with pars on 17 and 18, I think you're all right with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd say keep an eye on what's going on around you at this tournament because I have, I had a feeling these scores were going to clump, mm -hmm. and they certainly have. So as the round progresses, just keep an eye on what's happening around you. Especially what happened last year, right? Burr from the chase card. Robinson on 17. Not a bad rip. Nope. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of people landing over there. Off to the right, 50 feet. Gannon Burr. Six off the lead. Two to go. Round one.
There we go. That's at the right height. Let's see if it hooks back. Initially, it looked great. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened on the second half of that flight. Might have caught something out there on the right side. And took some speed off. Antilla. Didn't get over on it enough, did he? Uh-oh. Oh, that's my. out of bounds. He knew it immediately. I bet you in the practice rounds this shot felt a lot easier. Having a tailwind over your left shoulder, how the wind's blowing the opposite direction. Williams. One of the best looking shapes we've seen yet here. Brad Williams catches one of those last trees right around Circle's Edge. Nice open look though. That yeah, is. One of the best shapes and overall flights we've seen here at 17. And we're going to set it on down to Brian Earhart. He's with one of your co-leaders, co excuse me, Corey Ellis. All yours, Brian. Joining us now, Corey Ellis, 10 under par. You tie a couple other guys that shot that score, but it feels pretty good, it sounds like. How was the round for you? Uh, I felt like I played really solid. Uh, I missed a more routine upshot on 18 after throwing a really, really good drive. It's probably the best drive I've thrown in all of practice and everything, and kind of let that one slip away from me a little bit. Um, I missed some putts I feel like I should have probably made, but they were still kind of like circle's edge. It's like one of those 50-50s, mm -hmm. and just a, I feel like it was close to a really, really amazing round. Well, if you look at the stats, it looks like you had quite a few putts that you attempted you went eight for eight circle one but four for nine from c2 it's still not a bad day out there especially with this wind uh how did you fare putting in this wind how did it feel uh it felt solid overall definitely talk about the course in general a lot of changes made to it i believe 11 new holes or something like that can you talk about some of the newer holes and some of the wooded shots you're throwing uh you know i like the woods brian that's that's my bread and butter uh, i think it's a good change overall i think if like some specific trees here and there could go it would be amazing but i mean it's incredible the amount of work that they've done to get these holes in it's i, I think everybody's really enjoying it well uh, hopefully two more rounds left there's some storms looming and uh, temperatures definitely dropping right now uh do you think 10 10 10 would be enough to do it this weekend uh i would be stoked to, to do that so <laughs> i hope so well Corey, congratulations we'll see you tomorrow thanks brian How about that shot from Nicholas Antela from the boundary, huh? Ooh. Kissing the koozie on the way by. We're mm -hmm. walking to his birdie putt. <laughs> Given this 76 feet from the basket, Philo. Never count the man out. <laughs> no, he just made a huge one, didn't he? He does it all the time. Yeah. Beautiful that shape, yeah. Great. Beautiful shape. Just ran out of air. A little bit closer. Robinson also hunting birdie. Smidgen too much want. Can't fault him though. No. Wide open putt. Got to take a stab. Williams. This is to grab a stroke on a card. They call this a 54 foot putt. Ugh. They were close, Philo. No cigar, though, for the gang here on 17. No birdies. Nicholas Tantalo, unfortunately, is going to pick up a bogey with that OB tree smack. Did well to get it up and close so he can tap it in. And one heck of a back nine, unfortunately, dropping a stroke is going to sting a little bit for yeah. Nicolas Antela. Everybody dropping in. That's a bogey and a par. And uh, as they walk to the next, we're going to sneak in a break. We'll be back in just 60 seconds. Get you there.
Some of my favorite discs in my bag are the A-series discs. They're the ones I lean on to get close to the basket and each of them have a consistent grip. So as you cycle through the series, you won't have to change the way that you hold the disc. These are torque resistant discs that are more stable than the PA series, provide a consistent fade at the end of the flight. The best way to find your flight is to get out and use these discs yourself. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Welcome back, Robinson. T of 18. Ooh. That's pretty good, man. Mm -hmm. Gannon Burr. That is not what you want here at the 18th, early and left. Oh my goodness. I was just kind of thinking, that's really, this isn't really Gannon Burr's shape that he's, you know, super familiar with and likes to throw a lot. I don't know, man. Yeah. At this level, you got to have these you shots. You got to have them all, but. You got to have something for everything, you know. This is, it may look daunting from the screen, but in person, there's a pretty fair gap out there to hit. Oh, yeah. Williams. Not a bad kick. Nicholas. Let's see if he can fight his way back to seven after that bogey on 17. Looking good to start. Solid shot there from Nicholas Antela, left side of the fairway. As they make their way up the fairway, we're gonna check in with Calvin Heimberg. He's in the clubhouse with our own, very own Brian Earhart. All yours, Brian. It's now Calvin Heimberg, eight under par effort on the day. First round back after taking a little bit of time off. How you feeling? Um, feeling okay. Um, I'm only throwing backhands right now, zero or four hands. But um, yeah, as a whole, um, it's okay. It's way more uh, fun to be playing than it is to be watching people play so uh just a little frustrating on the course when you can't you know when you see shots that you can't throw but how many times were you wanting to lean on the forehand when, when you really couldn't um well i mean there wasn't really anything today where i was like i really want it because i the only way i was going to let myself play is if i had convinced myself i was going to throw zero mm -hmm. so um there weren't really many times where I like truly wanted to, but I, I do think there were some places where it would have been, it would have been nice. I think there's a couple par threes coming down the end that are pretty nice, and then a couple scramble shots also would have been convenient to be able to to rip basically more of a hyzer than like a weird turnover. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a heartbreaking finish in 18. Uh, what what, ha what happened there with the double bogey? Um, yeah, just a uh, pulled tee shot. Um, pulled the tee shot right, <laughs> hit a tree, kicked OB right, and. Uh, Put myself in a funky place where I had to kind of throw a, a turnover, and I threw one and ended up in the fairway. But I, I kind of had to do a patent pending to get up and down, and uh, just didn't execute that shot very well. So um, yeah, I mean, it was just got myself in a bunch of really, really tricky little spots is when you don't have a forehand. I mean, it routine up and down, you know, to get bogey with a forehand, but it's just not in the cards this week. So, well, two more rounds left. Uh, any any adjustments that you need to make, or just same game plan as always? 
Yeah, I mean, it's just continue to go out there and, you know, just try to hit the lines. I mean, if I, if I hit, if I hit all the lines I want to, you know, I can, I can still birdie every hole out here. It just, you know, room for error is a little bit less. Well, thanks Calvin. We'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Thank you. Forehand from Williams is going to find a tree. Had the shape, just missed the line of Skosh. We are scrolling through the score. Is any names popping out of here, man? Well, yeah, I mean, you see a lot of these guys that we've been talking about for years, you know, down there in 60th, 70th, 80th place, and it's kind of surprising, but not surprising with where the talent level is, you know, I mean, yeah. not too many guys really played great today, you know, like 30 dudes, 40 dudes kept it under par, 45. Is that it, really? You know, 50 guys, I guess, almost wow. half the field. And great players like James Proctor, you know, struggling. Parker Welk, guy who's been doing some work lately. Yeah, James is off to a good start, too. Entela in his second. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Bounce back there for Nikki. Mm -hmm. For eyeing down his third shot on 18. And Burr will start day two at least six off the lead. Caught a little something, slowed him down. Yeah. Frustrations here for Gannon Burr with what's looking like maybe the potential for tomorrow. This may be a two-round tournament. I don't know if six strokes is going to be something to overcome. Yeah, it's going to you know, be tough. If tomorrow the weather gets bad and they still play, I mean, can't really imagine all those guys up there just falling apart and Gannon coming back like that again. Yeah, you know? it's just too improbable, right? Too many good players ahead. Too many. He's probably going to start around the fourth or fifth card tomorrow. Maybe okay. fifth or sixth card tomorrow. He's going to be three or four down after this hole. Yeah. yeah I just checked the weather, and there's lightning warning literally from, from 9, 9 o'clock yeah. until 6 o'clock. It's going to be tough if it's not passing us. And what's, how, what's the radius? We're like 10 miles or something, 15 miles or something like that. If yeah. lightning's in that mm -hmm. vicinity, then no can do. Williams throwing three. Nate, as we're uh, getting through 18 here, let me get your thoughts on uh, day one on this new course. Newly redesigned course, that is. I love the new redesign at Harvey Pinnock. I, I feel like it's really dynamic. I've, I felt like there's a lot of scrambling out there. The, the new wooded holes are really challenging. They're fair, and they force these players to throw some really uncomfortable shots if they want to card birdies out here and it's a, it's not a hyzer fest it's at a golf course and it's not predictable i'm looking forward to another round tomorrow hopefully we get all three rounds in because I, I want to see it go down me too nate me too i love that thought it is this is not a hyzer fest course you're throwing every shot every shape testing your can't really just go out here and throw the thing all over the place. you got to be under control. Yep. Burr for par. That's yeah, just a layout for bogey. <clears throat> I really like the changes and how they reorganized everything here. How the flow last year was just so weird with everybody coming in at the bottom end of the course. You had to oh, march all the way up the hill to right. the top of the course and then 
you're all the way at the top of the course, you gotta march back down the hill to the parking lot. There's just all these things yeah. moving now. The flow starts at the beginning, ends at the beginning. It's really awesome. Right there by the parking lot. Antela. To get back to seven, he'll be on chase or third car tomorrow. Solid round for Nicholas Antela after the first nine holes wasn't looking so great for him and turned it around in a big way. Williams has a par putt, finding home. Robinson also for par. got for day one we made it <laughs> we did <laughs> made it through the round thankfully the weather held off and uh welcome you into the booth for the last time ian anderson philo brathwaite over there thoughts from a man on day one i really love what we saw today i saw some really awesome shots by some of the up-and-coming stars of the game, guys like Gavin Rathbun, who's kind of been off the scene for a little while, yeah. you know, trying to get his health back in order, and it's great to see him back in action, playing super strong. Corey Ellis back from New Zealand, finally on tour, rejoining the gang and playing super strong out the gate. You know, you got Joey Buckets out there, out there doing work. Yeah. Anthony Barella firmly in the mix. Calvin Heimberg right there after the double would he be without That's these blow-up holes huh? you know what i'm saying so it's going to be an exciting watch hopefully we get to the, get through all three rounds we will see tomorrow but so far i like what we're seeing it's going to be a fun finish yeah with you there man we're going to kick it off to one more break on the other side of the otb after show as well as an interview with andrew marweed we'll catch you there the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. Let's start from the beginning. I didn't choose Pound, I chose Levi. I trusted Levi to make the best bag possible. He's always trying to innovate. He wants it to be perfect. And I think he's the kind of guy that nothing's ever perfect. I trust the product. I trust the people behind the product. At this point, I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazak, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players. They are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. 
20 years of the educational disc golf experience, disc golf is now a mainstream activity in physical education across the nation. 150,000 lightweight golf discs, 267 permanent campus courses installed, and thousands of partner programs in all 50 states. As a 100% publicly funded charity, Edge Disc Golf couldn't do it without you. Please join our mission to reach and teach the next 3 million young disc golfers. Is your other co leader, Andrew Marweed. Let's send it on down. All right, joining us in the clubhouse, Andrew Marweed, tied for first currently at 10 under par clean. Talk about the day. Yeah, it was super windy for the front nine. So, uh, kind of after the front nine, when I realized I was bogey free and you know was making pretty much all my putts, I knew I had a special round going and kept it clean in the back nine, which is you know, pretty crazy c considering the conditions. So super stoked it was bogey free and even better at 10 birdies. <laughs> you said the putter felt pretty good today. The stats look like you were inside. 11 for 11 circle one, three for five circle two. Is that just another day at the office or did it feel particularly good today? It felt pretty good because of the wind. Um, you know, uh, a lot of my drives were landing tail side uh, of the basket, which was fortunate for me being a push putter or fortunate for anyone, obviously, but uh, had good spots and uh, definitely a good day of putting though, for sure. When it's this windy, are you able to consciously make decisions of what side of the greens to, to stick the drives? Um, no, not really. I'm mostly just thinking of the wind for the drive, and it just happened to like three times in a row where it was the tailwind instead of headwind side. Well, 10 under par, obviously looking pretty solid. Currently rated 1082, uh, at least for now. Uh, is there anything you feel like you need to adjust or change for the next day? Uh, ideally, I could change nothing. That'd be great. So just going to um, take it as it goes and try to reenact the same kind of shots and hopefully have a clean scorecard the rest of the weekend. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. And thank you, Andrew and Brian, for that. Any thoughts about Andrew's words? I love where his game's at. I love watching Andrew play. He's such a fantastic disc golfer. Usually his head is always in a great place. Super yeah, mellow, nice calm, mellow dude. disposition, yeah. believing in himself, doesn't throw in the towel on any rounds. And he's got it out there in front of him right now. He played a great round. He said if he could you know, carbon copy that again the next time he gets to hop on the track, it should end up well for him. And I agree with him. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah. Let's take a look at our top ten real quick. What do we got? What do we got in there? We can see our chase card and our league card for tomorrow. So Ellis, Marweed, Rathbun, and Barella. The tall guys off the top. <laughs> <laughs> the tall guys at the top, isn't it? Yeah. That's kind of how it is. We got Heimberg, Orem, Hebenheimer. We get to watch Hebenheimer for a four round tomorrow. That'll be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. If he's on, it's going to be a lot of fun because yeah. he's going to throw the piss out of the disc. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> the kid does no chill with a disc in his hand. He also putts very – like last he time I filmed him. He does some dad putts sometimes. He was – Dad putting, and then he was upside down spin putting. Wow! When he was inside twenty, it'll be entertaining. Let's I just can't wait to see how he's putting yeah, tomorrow. Gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. Greg Barsby, man. There you go. Double, triple G. Triple G. Hanging around. Yeah. I saw him before his round started this afternoon. He's feeling good. A few weeks back in the swing of things after the break from the nice. holidays and everything, and it's looking good. And it is time, Philo, for the OTB Ace of the Day. Yeah, there's only one option. <laughs> only Come one. on now, run that. Don't fail us, Marky. You got this, buddy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Nick, 
He was coming off this uh, most annoying double he's probably ever carved in his life. And, and then gets the ace. Earned it right back with this beautiful little bunny hop. Oh. Ching! The young man didn't even spy. Look at that Zero smirk. Nothing. Smiles. How? All business out there, Nicolas Santola. He's a professional. Smile when he gets to the parking lot, I guess. You know, I, emotions, you don't want to get them too high or too low. You know, keep them in the middle, right? Still want to celebrate good <laughs> stuff, man. And that was a special moment it on was. camera. It was. Open here in Austin, making memories. Shot of the day, Nicolas Santola with the ace. Love that. And make sure you guys stay tuned after the show. we got Tournament Central coming your way. And more highlights, interviews there. And that is all we got for today. There are your show times for tomorrow. Hopefully the weather... Cooperate, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it don't, then I guess we'll see you all Sunday. But we're going to keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully we'll see you guys right back here tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow in the morning. Got the FPO cracking off about 10 a.m. for the early start for the show. The Tournament Central, rather, MPO, 3 o'clock for Tournament Central, 3.30 start time. Hope to catch you guys there. For Ian Anderson, everybody behind the scenes, I'm Philo Brathwaite. Good night from Austin, Texas. <laughs>